The weather has turned. The warning's been issued. The eye fixed squarely on Syracuse. The Canes have rolled into town ready to rage. The calm before the storm. A Big East encounter under the dome with the second-ranked Miami Hurricanes come calling on the Syracuse Orangemen. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin on a very cold and crisp night outside in Syracuse, New York. We've had snow for the last couple of days here, but inside the warm confines of the Carrier Dome, uh, well, it is a game of major proportions when we look at the BCS, as well as that game a little bit later tonight down in Tallahassee, Florida. Here's the situation. Here in Syracuse, Miami comes into hostile territory, trying to tame a Syracuse defense that has been very, very difficult to move and score on by everybody they played this year. Down in Tallahassee, number three, Florida State, number four, Florida, they're lurking. They would love nothing more than to see the Canes stumble here tonight so that they can leapfrog them and have an opportunity at still another national championship. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet are down in Tallahassee. We'll hear from them at halftime with an update on that game. Meanwhile, back here in Syracuse, Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten will be joining me when I move back inside the dome. And we'll talk more about tonight's matchup between Miami and Syracuse. Yes, Oklahoma, then Miami, Florida State, very close behind in Florida and Washington. Hi, once again, everybody. Ron Franklin joined by Mike Gottfried, as usual. Mike, I get the distinct feeling, though, that rather than worry about BCS in this game tonight, Butch needs to worry about winning this ball game and about Syracuse. Yeah, I, I think Butch Davis, when he comes into this ball game, Ron, I think he's worried about just winning, not the points that he can pile up, because he's worried about this dome and the Syracuse defense, and if they get their ground game going. So he's got to be concerned about just winning. You mentioned their ground game. Their offense to me and watching them play uh, on tape, they may be as complete or more so than anybody in the country. They may be the best offense in college football with the addition of and the emergence of Ken Dorsey, the quarterback. He's just hitting on all cylinders and 19 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. Doesn't make many mistakes. All right, now having said that then, what gives Syracuse a chance to win here tonight? These fans, uh, they've got to stay in this ball game as long as they can and then the defensive effort like we saw against Virginia yeah. Tech they've got to give that same kind of effort even though Dwight Freeney is not playing the All-American defensive end and of course R.J. Anderson a new starter at quarterback tonight the head coaches Butch Davis sixth season in Miami 70% winning percentage, and he knows that he is on the verge of something really huge. Paul Pasqualoni, 10 years here at Syracuse, and actually, that is as the head coach. He was the defensive coordinator before that, 80-35-1. and one. Don't have to give you the weather. Obviously, it's perfect because it's 6.37 Eastern time. It's 38 degrees outside. Wonderful inside. Fast track. 
Sears gets ready to kick it off. 72% of his kickoffs have gone out of the end zone. We'll see if he can duplicate that again. Very high, very long, and this one is going to be returnable from one yard deep. Will Allen. And oh, wow, does he take a head high shot at the 16 yard line. And let's check on the sideline with Adrian Carson. Adrian? Ron, you need to know the motivation with hits like that that Miami takes the memory of 66 to 13, that blowout loss here two years ago. I know it was a different time and a different team, but the Santana Mosses and the Reggie Waynes were here. And in pregame warm up, I could see and hear that old brash, defiant attitude that the Hurricanes used to be known for. Even Greg Mark, one of the assistant coaches who won the national championship at Miami, was gesturing and responding to the crowd. One thing Miami will not be tonight here, Ron, is intimidated by Syracuse. Okay, Adrian. By the way, nice jacket. <laughs> R.G. Anderson, the red shirt freshman. And they give it right up the middle. D. Brown. D. would love to have a big night. He's from Altamont Springs, Florida. As we take a look at the starters tonight on offense. R.J. Anderson. It's his third start. It's the first time that he started at home. His first two starts were on the road. Here's who he has with him. Brown and Chris Davis as running backs. Malik Campbell and Pat Woodcock, the receivers. And Graham Mandley is the tight end. We look for him primarily as a blocker tonight rather than a pass receiver. Anderson out of Plainville, Connecticut. He said nervous, no. Excited, yes. Particularly to get to play at home. Second down. D. Brown again. Wow, there is nothing there. There's Morgan along with Howard Clark filling up the middle of that line. And it's going to be third down and long Syracuse. Up front, Alexander, O'Connor, Romeo, Vaughn Smith, and Joe Burton and Mike. Talk about who they face off with. Ron, a good defensive front. Damian Lewis is the best of all this defensive line. He's played hurt since the Washington football game, but he'll give you an All-American effort on every play. Now, right now, the defense of Miami has had Syracuse with no gain. It is third down and 11. They need to take it out to the 26-yard line to keep this ball alive on this opening sequence. You see Morgan pouched at the line of scrimmage, stays at home. They come with just the four-man front, and he's going to go on top. Got a man there, just overthrown. And that's Maurice Jackson, and he had a couple of steps on the defensive back, Fitzgerald. Ron, a busted coverage because Al Blades looked right away to Edward Reed. They got mixed up in the coverage, and when they had an open receiver. Maurice Jackson for a big play. First punt of the night, and this has been an Achilles for the Syracuse Orangemen. And it's a strength for Miami. Santana Moss, the best punt returner in the country. As you can see, three touchdown returns on the season. Schaefer waits for the snap. He's a freshman. He is out of the state of Florida. Sarasota gets a good pass. Good high coverage kick. Moss signals for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 46-yard line. So Miami will take it over with very good field position on their opening sequence. Ken Dorsey, sophomore out of Orinda, California. Let's take a look at the folks that will accompany him to the line of scrimmage. He will have behind him James Jackson and D.J. Williams. Tight end is Ivan Mercer, Santana Moss, and Reggie Wayne. Probably as good a combination as there is in the country as far as receivers. First play from scrimmage for the Miami Hurricanes. That's Moss in motion. He's going to throw on first down. Short drop. Gets it to Moss right over the middle. And he gets knocked down immediately by Will Hunter. Miami's offensive line. Keep an eye on Bryant McKinney. He's a giant at 6'9", 330 pounds. He may be one of the best they've ever had. The LaFair, Romberg, Bigla, and Gonzalez. And who do they face off with, Mike? Ron, a good defensive line, but Dwight Freeney, the All-Americans, not playing. Mark Holtzman takes over for him. That's 13 sacks. That's not in the football game tonight. Well, very quickly, Ken Dorsey is going to go to the sideline. I don't know if there was confusion on the play that was being signaled in or what. We have a timeout. 12.41 left in this first quarter. Right back. 
And we're back as you look at Dwight Freeney, the all-everything defensive end. Only a junior out of New Haven, Connecticut. 32 tackles uh, for a loss, 18, 13 sacks, and he was just a man possessed in a game we had earlier against Virginia Tech. Yeah, Ron, you look at those statistics. 18 tackles for losses and 13 sacks, and they miss him tonight in this football game. You just can't replace him. By the way, Syracuse called that timeout as they go straight ahead with Jackson, and he'll take it inside the 50. That's a Quentin Harris who makes the tackle. What did they see, Mike, for the defense to call the timeout? Robert Williams, number 80, lined up at fullback for uh, Miami in a strange formation that they, they just called a timeout as soon as they saw him behind the uh, quarterback. But he will play a little fullback tonight behind D.J. Williams because D.J. Davenport is hurt, right? is hurt and, uh, so they're going to need him at fullback. He's lined up there again. It's third down. They need to take it to the Syracuse 43-yard line. Crowd doing what they do best, and that has become very noisy. Play action. Going to go long. Got single coverage right here in the middle, and it's caught inside the 20-yard line, and that's Andre King as they got him one up 35 yards. The gain on the play, Will Allen made the stop. And Will Allen's going to get the best shot of every team that comes in here because they're throwing away Here's Andre King, the receiver, and Will, Will Allen is the best corner uh, for the Syracuse football team. Now, he's going to be lined up on Moss most of this evening, but they got him on Andre King on that play. Both Moss and Reggie Wayne go to the top of your screen, which is wide to the right. Moss in motion. Dorsey, great protection ball. Almost intercepted after the tip. And Clifton Smith got a hand on it. Walker almost made the pick off. The linebackers for Syracuse. Greenwood, awfully good. Clifton Smith and Jamil Dumas started last week. He's a redshirt freshman. Had a career game. They said, you'll do it again. What about and the second? Will Allen's the best. An All-American corner rated behind Ken Lucas of Ole Miss as the best corners in the country. Here comes second down. Jackson straight ahead puts the head down and goes inside the 10 down close to the five yard line running very hard the 5'11 215 pound senior out of Bell Glade and it is Quentin Harris and Jamil Dumas who combine on the stop if you bring a team in here to play against Syracuse in this dome you want to do exactly what Miami's doing here put points on the board early get this crowd out of the ball game and, and let your team play Two tight ends, eye formation. Reggie Wayne is the man split wide to the right. Here he comes in motion. Dorsey, under pressure, throws for the end zone, looking for Shockey, and it's overthrown. Shockey is a tight end, but boy, he has been impressive. He's really an offensive weapon for them. Well, he really is. But Eric Downing, number 90. Number 49, Duke Pettijohn just bothered Ken Dorsey enough that he couldn't throw that ball into Shockey. Couldn't get the finesse that he wanted. And Sievers is going to come in to attempt a 22-yard field goal from in the 20s. He has three of three on the season. You see it right on the left hash mark. Good pass. Ball is down. And he's four of four as he splits him. So with 10.45 left to play in the opening quarter, the Miami Hurricanes take the opening drive at a very impressive they go on top three to nothing. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Holiday Inn, who gives you more, and more is better. And by WorldCom, Generation D. Marshall Street, some of the hot spots that the uh, students frequent. And a lot of pizza to be had and also eaten in this part of the world. A very good pizza. Inside the dome, it is very comfortable. As we said, it's been cold and blustery and snow the last couple of days. But inside, Hurricanes heated it up quickly on that opening drive, Mike. A very good job by Miami to get down there and get points. They wanted a touchdown, but they'll settle for a field goal, try to get these fans out of the ball game. As we mentioned off the top of the telecast, Sievers has knocked 72% of his kickoffs out of the end zone. But he didn't on the first one. Very high end of Miranda. This one's going deep. About 
six yards deep and will not be returned. And Brian Kenny, let's check with you. Ron, we go to South Carolina and Clemson here. Aaron Hunt on for the field goal for Clemson, down by one. And now up by two, it's a final 16 to 14. Clemson just edges South Carolina. Well, what a ball game. That helped Clemson to have an open date last week. And that's the thing. It's uh, unfortunate about football schedules. Basketball a little different, but football, you can hear South Carolina playing Florida in a tough football game. And then you come back and play Clemson. And Clemson has an open date. Benefited from it. Dantzler still trying to play with that injury to his foot. He's yep. not 100%. And in fact, I think I read he's going to have to have surgery after the football season is over. Yeah, after the Gator Bowl. Go so this is not a good situation. The penalty against Syracuse as far as field position. And a discussion goes on, and now they're talking with the defensive captain, Dan Morgan. So Butch Davis paces nervously across the way. And he said last night that uh, once they arrived here that they can't worry about BCS and how many points you can score and all this kind of stuff. They've got to worry about this team right here and their young quarterback, R.J. Anderson, who also gives you an option look, probably better than Noons, who was the starter. Play action, quick out pass, and they've got this one to Maurice Jackson, but you see that great pursuit on the part of the uh, Hurricanes. Buchanan is a man who's going to make the tackle. Also, Green was out there. Linebackers Clark Dan Morgan and Chris Campbell and how about the secondary Ron this is a good secondary that's caused a lot of problems Philip Buchanan uh, gets to start tonight at the corner and he was in on that last play and Al Blades is very much uh, a defensive back that will play close to the line of scrimmage against the run. Well, he's creeping up right now, and you see him showing blitz for the outside as well. And here they come. They'll run the option into the boundary. There's nothing there. R.J. Anderson is going to be engulfed by Dan Morgan and also 48 Chris Campbell. That play never got started. Ron, Al Blades, we talked about him when we gave up the lineups, but Al Blades is going to play real close to the line of scrimmage. See number seven, the free safety. He's got the quarterback on the option. But he doesn't have to get there because you see the pursuit of Miami's defense five in on that tackle. And one of the things that Miami likes to do as well third down and long 10 or longer uh, they're going to bring blades up put eight in the box cover you man on man outside and give you underneath but they're not going to give you anything longer. No, than they're going to come down. after you they're going to blitz you here they come yep, again. Yep and there's a quick pass Jackson dropped it was that a backwards pass official says no incomplete. See this is not the way you want to start if you're Syracuse offensively three and out three and out and then punt the ball to Santana Moss and give up good field position to Miami's offense. Noons, Troy the sophomore out of Butler, Pennsylvania. He was the starter last time we came in here when they played Virginia Tech. As you look at Schaefer, Mike kicking for the second time tonight. Waits back at the six yard line. Miami leads it three to nothing. Just over nine minutes to play in this opening quarter. Spiral returnable Moss from 32. Nice job for the Gunners. Now here comes a late flag from downfield. As Leverett made the tackle 47 yards and a kick and five on the return and they might be taking a walk back here. Leverett by the way is the deep snapper. For Syracuse made the snap that downfield. Well, tomorrow on the Sunday NFL countdown, this week's marquee matchup: Redskins and the Rams, and the Jets versus the Dolphins. Plus, Donovan McNabb that uh, has the Eagles in the playoff hunt. But how about their defense? And at 7:30, Chris Berman and Tom Jackson return for NFL Prime Time scores, highlights, and analysis from Week 12 in the NFL. Ken Dorsey.
The only time he has really not played well and has gotten rattled was when they went on the road up to Washington and the crowd really made a lot of noise and, and he got frustrated in that one. Syracuse, this crowd, they could do the same thing here, but Syracuse offense is going to have to do a yeah, much better job, help. as you pointed out. From the 27. Jackson tries it at left uh, right tackle. Maybe a yard. Duke Pettijohn is there to interrupt this play. Also, you can see Neil Dumas is close by. Ron, this Miami football team offensively is very balanced. They're averaging 461 yards on offense, but you see the balance, 193 on the rushing yards and the passing yards. And you talked about Ken Dorsey. Larry Coker said he bounced back after the Washington game. They, they had a road game to West Virginia, and we all know how tough West Virginia can be. But he played well in that ball game. Well, there's the crowd right there. Dorsey has to come out from under center and call a timeout. So let's take the break with him. 8.22 remaining. Opening quarter. Miami leads it 3 to nothing. Programs on sale inside the Carrier Dome. Trust me, there are a lot of folks glad that there is a dome stadium here to play this football game in tonight. Yesterday would have been no fun at all, would it, Mike? You're looking at one of them. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be outside tonight. Boy, I'll tell you, there were flakes coming down yesterday, big as a silver dollar. Second down, just over 10. Proud again, getting into it. As Dorsey, short drop. Gets the pass to the near sideline, incomplete. Reggie Wayne, the intended receiver. Brian Kelly, let's check with you again. Ron, it's the big game, 103rd meeting, the axe on the line. Stanford looked good for its sixth straight win in big game lore, but back comes Cal. Joe Egbert goes in, down by seven. That ties it up. They're now in overtime, Ron. All righty. Our situation, three to nothing. The Miami Hurricane, Dorsey, 2 of 5, 39 yards. He's missed his last three. And right now, Burton and Will Hunter have checked in. It is six defensive backs for the Syracuse Orange Bowl. On third down, Jackson straight ahead, almost breaks the second tackle. Will not have the first down at the 31-yard line, and it's Eric Downing who was holding up. This stop right here, not only the defense, I credit the crowd. They rattled him a little yep, bit that they, time. They really did. We talked about the crowd, and they came to life in that play. Eric Downing with a big play. Larry Coker, the Miami play caller, said he's the best I've seen all year, and he made a good play on Miami's offense that play. Freddie Capshaw. Freddie was sensational in pregame warm-up. He can really boom the ball, not only high, but long. Pressure on him. This one's off the side of his foot. I jinxed him. It's going to go out of bounds. A very short kick just across midfield. And let's see where they're going to spot him out. At the 36-yard line, it's a 32-yard kick. No return, Syracuse. Dorsey on the far sideline visiting with Larry Coker upstairs. And not to overwork the point that we were making, but the crowd did have an effect on him on that series. Ron, now Syracuse comes out, four wide receivers, three wide receivers tight end, spreading the Miami's defense out. RJ Anderson pitches the ball back. D. Brown, boy, the quickness of this pursuit. And we talk about this all the time, Mike. You cannot duplicate in practice what you're going to see against the Miamis and the Florida States of this world with the kind of team quickness they have. No, it takes a, maybe the first five minutes of a football game to get back to where it's game speed. D. Brown, he never has a chance to get turned up. Philip Buchanan again uh, at the corner. He's played well here in the first quarter. Good job by Chris Campbell to make the quarterback Anderson pitch the ball. By the way, keep an eye on number 44, Dan Morgan. The next tackle he makes will be number 510. That will be a new Big East record. Pressure on Anderson. Gets away from uh, the pursuit. And the ball is caught inbounds. That's Woodcock. 
You talk about a big time catch. Pat Woodcock, that's his 25th reception. He averaged 17 yards every time he catches a pass. And he snatched that ball out of the air. Syracuse will be looking at a third. Anderson under duress, but look, look at this catch. Going up high to catch that football and get his body in bounds. So they spotted at the 42 yard line and need to take it to the 46 and a half to move the chains or again it's going to be three and out. Miami a lot of movement at the line of scrimmage to confuse Syracuse. Anderson pressure was there and he's going to he loses the football and is recovered initially by Syracuse. It may be the best play they've had tonight. It is the best play. They got a first down off of it. Malik Campbell, I yeah. believe, got the football. And uh, Adrian Carson was talking about the size of Malik Campbell's hands last night. He told me he's got the biggest hands he's ever seen. Well, the hands came in handy right here because number 10 just picked that ball up and uh, recovered the fumble. So it's a first down from the 45-yard line. Sweep to the left side. Brown has five, has eight and nine, close to the first down. And that's Edward Reed who came up and made the tackle. That is the best run from scrimmage by Syracuse tonight. Yeah, Deep Brown's a, a the leading rusher on this Syracuse football team. He's an inside runner. He's not going to take it the distance, but he's a slasher. He averages almost six yards every time he touches the football. It gets into the secondary. Good blocking by the offensive line of Syracuse. You could see Deloach, big number 71, Giovanni Deloach, a junior out of Teaneck, New Jersey, out front blocking on that play. This time, Woodcock and Campbell to the bottom of your screen. What? And Syracuse what? in that customary eye formation. Brown again, wanted the left, going to take it to the right, denied the 35, and that's what he needed for the first down as Dan Morgan has just become the new record Holder as far as individual tackles career in the Big East. We're going to give him credit. Hopefully, officially, they will do the same thing. Butkus and Nagurski Award candidate. A lot of people think he's going to win those awards. Had a great career here at Miami. 6'3, 230 pounds out of Coral Springs, Florida. Ten of his tackles this year have been behind the line of scrimmage for lost yardage. And you can see how close they are. The other thing that he did that really <laughs> blew me away against Pittsburgh, he had 20 tackles against Pittsburgh, 11 of those solo, which shattered the all-time Miami uh, team record. Well, that you mentioned the Pittsburgh game, and that's exactly what Paul Pascaloni and the staff at Syracuse talked to their team about. They said that game was 13-7, almost at the half. And he said, we beat Pittsburgh here, and we should be able to stay right with them. And if, with a few breaks, we can take this game to the fourth quarter, close and a chance to win. It's Aaron Lewis, the tight end. They go straight ahead. And Breaks it inside the 30, and he's down to the 26-yard line. Crossed him up that time. He was not as a blocker. He was there as a runner, and he got 10. Best drive of the night by Syracuse. The first two offensive series for them, three and out. The biggest thing they're doing right now is they're running clock and keeping that potent Miami offense off the field. Option. Pitches it back. That's Woodcock. Edward Reed made the tackle, and you could see Reed's head got snapped back, and he was a little slow in getting up. Nice little adjustment here by George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator. He brings Pat Woodcock in motion. Now, all of a sudden, you have a pitch man. He's your wide receiver. He's going to kick the ball out to Woodcock. It's good blocking downfield. And he becomes a running back out of that wide receiver position into the short side of the field. George DeLeon, 15th season. Associate head coach here at Syracuse. They give it to Brown. Nothing on the left side. He just gets stopped in his tracks, and it's going to be a loss on the play. 
Javon Rhodes, number 50. Senior out of Laporte, Texas, 6'2, 250 pounds. So it's a loss, and it's going to be third down. And if Syracuse wants to keep this thing going, they've got to take it to the inside the 17. And they've it's had the kicking third. problems. And so they they want to get this first down. They don't want to have to settle for three points. Well, you're right. Schaefer is 7 of 17 this year. Eighth play of the drive. Anderson gives it to D. Brown. Penetration by the defensive front, and he's knocked down for a three-yard loss by Matt Walters. When you get that kind of penetration, there is no way any offensive play is going to go. And now Paul Pasqualoni has got a decision to make, but not for long. He's going for the three. And not a lot of confidence in the field goal unit this year. Schaefer's longest is 37. That was against Pitt. But 7 of 17 on the season. This is going to be a 41-yard attempt out of the hold of Troy Noons. Pass inside, handled well, and long enough, but wide left. No good. 7 of 18 now. And that brings the, uh, the Boo Birds out. But that's the right call, Ron. You've got to try the field goal. You try to, you got to try to get points on the board here. Adrian Carson, let's check with you on the sideline. Consider all the work that Schaefer has to do. As a kicker, he kicks off, he kicks extra points, or at least tries to, and he has to punt as well. There are a few kickers left in the Division One level run who have to do all three. And you know that they can drive coaches nuts. In the cold the other night on Thursday, they had him working like crazy. They had him working like crazy in here yesterday. He kicks so much at so many different positions, he could get worn out. Right over the middle, and he's got his tight end Shockey, the man we were talking about who has become such an offensive weapon, did not go through spring practice with this football team. They didn't get him until August. And Larry Coker said, you know, wow, this guy has turned into a real force. Yeah, you get him right down the middle on, on two deep. He's a 4 5, five 40. So he's got good speed in the tight end position. And he's got good size. 6'6. Six, six, nice target for Ken Dorsey. Well, you bet. 6'6, six, six, 245 pounds. Miami right back in Syracuse territory. They lead it three to nothing. About to hit two and a half minutes left opening quarter. Here's Jackson. Hanging on to him is Clifton Smith just after he gets the handoff. And Brian Kenny will check with you again. Ron, we go to overtime. Stanford and Cal. Cal came up empty in its first possession. So here's Stanford taking its shot. Randy Fasani to Casey Moore. That's a touchdown. It's over six straight for Stanford. The longest winning streak in big game history. And this is over Oregon State over Oregon. 23-13. Boy, what a huge win for uh, former Miami coach. Yeah, Dennis Erickson. Mm -hmm. May get a lot of Coach of the Year votes. Jackson gets by a tackler, breaks it into the secondary. That's going to be enough for the first down. Inside the 35-yard line, it's good for 11. Quentin Harris making the stop, but over on the sideline, not a good sight for Miami defensive fans as uh, Dan Morgan being attended to it. It looks as though they are trying to see if uh, that big toe somewhere in that area that he has got a real tender spot. They have cut back the tape on that ankle. Ron, what happens after you get a missed field goal? You get deflated. Crowd gets deflated. Your defense gets a little, a little deflated. They got to come up with a play here. Offensive lineman number 79, LaFair moved. It's going to take him back five on uh, Miami. And Carson, let's check back with you. Possibility of a broken bone in the large right toe of Dan Morgan. Wow. Checking right now to find out if he can put any pressure on that. If he can, then the question becomes, can he bend that and move forward at all? They want to make sure before they have to take him off the field and check for x -ray time. You know, Adrian, one of the most difficult things also, and it's, obviously it's very tender, but on this very hard surface, yeah. it would be virtually impossible for him to come back to night, you would think. Very hard. Very hard. You've got uh, one inch of the turf and then concrete right below it. Dorsey's pass. Got him open, and that is Daryl Jones, number one, a junior out of Dallas, Texas. 
so far, Ron, in this passing, and they're going right at Will Allen, too. Daryl Jones, number one. We have not seen Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne as much as Andre King and Daryl Jones. Just fits in this, in this zone coverage. First down from the 16 yards. Moss and Wayne both up here, the leading receivers for this Miami football team, both with 37 catches. Miami now already four plays, 10 yards or better. Here comes Jackson. This time, nothing. Hit at the line of scrimmage. That's Marlon Greenwood, the senior out of Freeport, New York. He is a very, very good one, and you see why he wears a big C on his chest. He's one of the three team captains. Yeah, Chris Rippon, the coach, uh, the defensive coordinator, said in 18 years of coaching, there's nobody been better at the linebacker position for him than Marlon Greenwood. He has to pick up the loss of Dwight Freeney. In fact, we may see number 52 out of the linebacker spot and as a rush end on third down and long for Miami. Did we ever have one of yes. those? <laughs> From the 16, Dorsey looks near side. Out of the hands of Reggie Wayne, Willie Ford with the defensive play. Willie Ford plays this ball the way you're supposed to play it and strips the arms of Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne, six foot one, trying to get the fade. Ford's real tough at him at the line of scrimmage, not letting him get a free release, and then he does a nice job of slamming down the arms. Third down. They need to take it to the six-yard line. Ron watch Santana Moss. I would figure that he's going to be a factor here. Now that's Moss in motion. Here comes the safety blitz. Gets the pass out. Caught at the 10. Breaks the tackle. And he is very close to the first down as Walker will finally stop him after a gain of 11. That is the end of the first quarter. So let's catch our breath for a moment and take the time out. It is Miami 3 and Syracuse nothing as we head to the second 15 minutes of play. That's uh, Dwight Freeney who was unable to dress because of the injury to his spleen talking with uh, kicker Mike Schaefer over on the sideline and also uh, we'll get an update uh, from uh, from Adrian exactly what's going to happen but during the timeout Dan Morgan the all everything linebacker for the Miami Hurricanes had to go to the locker room and Adrian has a new report on what they think the extent of the injury is. Probable ligament damage now is what they're saying, Ron, to the flexor, which if you try to move the big toe on your right foot back, you'll feel where that tendon is. Well, he can barely get on the ball of his foot. He had to keep that straight and obviously limp off the field. He didn't even want to put a sock on there. So there's a possibility that beyond broken bone, he's going to have some ligament damage. Wow. Back to the situation at hand. It is first down for Miami. First down from the five-yard line. They had 129 yards in the first half. This is Jackson. Breaks it to the outside, and Maurice will score. It is now 9 to nothing, Miami. Harris thought he had him and could not corral him. Ever since the field goal miss, not blaming the field goal kicker because a lot of things go into that, but ever since that time, the fans, everything else is kind of taking a dip here kind of put a, a pin in the balloon you're right Sievers to attempt the extra point trying to make it 10 to nothing nice job and a high pass handled well and he knocks it home so with 14 54 left until halftime a deep breath on the part of Paul Pasqualoni because he realizes they got their hands full this evening nice job by James Jackson to cutting it back and you see number 29 Quentin Harris has a tackling opportunity but uh, takes a bad angle by the way I mentioned that uh, Miami had 129 yards in the first quarter Syracuse had a total of 40 and keep this in mind 13 of those 40 came on the on the fumble that went forward eight plays 77 yards three minutes and four seconds Later tonight at ABC Sports, the showdown of the Sunshine State, number three Florida versus number four Florida State at eight Eastern. Chris Winky, a little under the weather the past few days, but he'll be ready to go for the Knolls. The winner with hopes of passing Miami for the number two spot and the BCS standings. 
And there you take a look at them. Oklahoma has already won 27-13 over Texas Tech. And Washington is leading Washington State 13-0. the kickoff this one high and deep and nope gonna go down to a knee Woodcock thought better of it so that's two of the three kickoffs tonight by the Miami kickoff man Todd Sievers that uh, they are not returnable now Ron R.G. Anderson's got to got to put him in a position to be successful here he's 2-0 as a starter, he's limited a little bit in his running ability because of a knee injury, but he's got toughness. He played linebacker at Milford Academy, so he he's only, a tough guy. You know what? He only played quarterback two one games. game. I was think, it? Was it two? I think it two games. And but they saw enough in those two games that they they really liked him as a prospect <laughs> at quarterback. Timeout, Miami making some personnel changes on the defensive side of the ball. We'll take it with him. 14-48 until halftime. 10 to nothing, Kane. 10 to nothing, Miami. Mike, take a look at this graphic to uh, pay tribute not only to the Miami offense, but defensively. Plays for negative yards for Syracuse, four from minus 11 and four rushes for no gain. And you talk to every coach on Syracuse staff. They said, we've got to run the football against Miami to have any chance. So far, they have not been able to do very much on the ground. Anderson wings it. Almost intercepted is 31. Philip Buchanan cut in front and almost made the interception. Adrian Carson, what do you have for us? Hurricane defense had to take a timeout because of confusion on the part of number 51, Jonathan Vilma, who takes the place of Dan Morgan. He wasn't sure whether he was supposed to play middle linebacker or actually go over and replace Howard Clark at his linebacker position because Clark can play both. That type of indecision at that point really gives Syracuse an opportunity just behind the defensive line. And Adrian, just to add to you, you see him looking at his wrist because he's got the defenses on his wrist. He now has to call the defensive signals for this Miami defensive team. He sees the guy getting them lined up yep. right, huh? They give it to the fullback. First man through goes for about three yards out to the 22-yard line. And uh, Vilma is the man who made the tackle as he is congratulated by his teammates. Well, he just, into the ball game. He just heard Adrian talking about him. So he said, I'm going to make a tackle. George Scott uh, picked up about two, two and a half yards in the play. And now it's third down. And Syracuse needs to take the ball out to the 30-yard line. Two of the three drives that they have had tonight, it was three and out. And Mike and I were just talking during the timeout. They can't continue to do this because no. the slaughter will be on if this offense does not get in harmony with what their defense is trying to do. Didn't get the playoff. That's going to be five more yards added against the Orangemen. Now, if they don't get a first down, they're going to start playing. And Miami's going to start playing against the computer because they're going to work that uh, the scores. Paul Pascaloni knows he's got a young redshirt freshman quarterback who took over for Troy Nunes. Now, Mike, here comes what George DeLeon said is that automatic blitz situation with a third down and long, third and 10 or whatever longer. Third 13 right here. They're yeah. going to come after him and play tight band coverage. Let's see if they do come after him here. They might not with Dan Morgan out. Anderson. Better do something, doesn't do anything in time, and is tackled back at the 10-yard line by Cornelius Green. And now it is going to be fourth down and very long for the Orangemen. And when you look at this defense now, they, this is a little bit of a zone blitz here. And R.J. Anderson just a little confused, Ron. And now the problem for it becomes Santana Moss on the punt return. Miami's only blocked one kick. They go for returns. Schaefer about three yards deep in the end zone. Driving high spiral. Moss from the 41. Breaks two tackles and then finally gets out of bounds at around the 47-yard line. 
Snell made the tackle for Syracuse. 48 yards in the kick and six on the return. In tonight's Aflac trivia question, who was the last team to win a national title after losing a game in September? The answer later on. Syracuse defense on the spot now, Ron. You give Miami's offense the ball on about the 47-yard line, you're in trouble. You're, yeah, the, uh, by the way, Clinton Portis, who has been injured, came back against Louisiana Tech. It's a foot injury in the ball game. Sophomore out of Gainesville, Florida. Right over the middle and got him open. D.J. Williams, the fullback, just inside the 35. And that Syracuse defense, the porous areas, are right over the middle for the tight end and also now the running back. Right past the linebackers, Ron. D.J. Williams comes out of the backfield. You're going to see him at the fullback position. He comes out and he gets right, but he gets bumped right there and he gets right behind the linebackers for the play, for the catch. D.J. Williams, a freshman out of Concord, California. Mercer, the tight end, came out of his stance and started blocking before the ball was snapped. You take right, Dwight start. Freeney start. out of the defense, Ron. We talked good. about he. We talked to him yesterday. You and I had a nice conversation. What a nice young man. Yeah, he is. Uh, All-American player. 18 tackles for losses. That means he's behind the line of scrimmage 18 times. 13 sacks out of the total team sacks of 29. So that you take that out and you take the leadership off the field. That's a big loss for Syracuse tonight. First down and 15. That's Jones in motion. And they give it off to Portis back into the boundary, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds after a short gain, maybe a couple of yards on the play. And let's check with Adrian. Adrian? Ron, if you remember, there was a time in the Virginia Tech game last time we were here about a month ago when Freeney came out after sack number four, four and a half, feeling a little bit winded. Little did we know at the time that he had a lacerated spleen. A couple days later, he had a temperature over 100 degrees. He went home to check it out with his family physician. They acknowledged, yes, lacerated or ruptured spleen. He was home for two weeks in Connecticut. He has come back. They expect him back if Syracuse can make a bowl game, maybe by the first of the year. Some of the doctors said, though, Adrian, it might take two to three months for him to just sit and do nothing. That's Wayne in motion. Play action. Stepping out. Got him wide open. Deep. Reggie Wayne, Matt we were just talking about, nobody picked up the motion man. I think Willie Ford thought he was going to run a corner route, Ronnie. He made a good move on Willie Ford and hit him on the post. And Ken Dorsey delivered that ball on the money. Watch Reggie Wayne come down the field. Looks like he's going to run a corner. Now he breaks the post, and he got Willie Ford turned over and uh, easy touchdown for Syracuse, Miami, for uh, Miami. Miami is making this thing look very yeah. easy. As Todd Sievers comes on for the extra point, and it is blocked. And the flag is down. I'd be surprised if it's holding on Miami, but because uh, it looked like somebody got tackled from Syracuse. Yep. So the block will stand, and there's a timeout. 11.51, left until halftime. And our new score is Reggie Wayne takes it the distance. 16 to nothing Miami. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. And by Tostitos. Dig in, kick back, stay all season. Now, chilly night on campus. Some people moving about. Total yards in this ball game. Miami now at 191. 192, let's make it. And Syracuse at 35. They have had the ball four times, and three of the four series have been three and out. Woodcock and Allen, the two deep men for the Orangemen. Paul Pasqualoni looking on from the sideline. He knew the task was a major one tonight. 
but I think he may be even a little surprised at what they have seen so far. Line drive kick, and it's going to be taken one yard deep. Will Allen. And Allen gets turned to flip just after he comes across the 10 yard line. That's Maurice Sykes, who was downfield on the special teams to make the tackle. College basketball coming up on Tuesday, November the 28th. It's the ACC and Big Ten Challenge. 7 o'clock Eastern, it's Wake Forest battling Michigan, followed at 9, Illinois, taking on the number two ranked Blue Devils of Duke. And over on ESPN2, Northwestern meets Clemson, followed by Georgia Tech and Iowa. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Again, not great field position for Syracuse, and this option play is going to go for virtually nothing as Quincy Hips is there to make the tackle. One quick reminder, I just read the promo on basketball. Congratulations to Mike Krzyzewski on winning his 500th last night in 21 years at Duke. And let me just say one thing. There is a great example of why alumni get too antsy sometimes. Mike Krzyzewski, after two years at Duke, a lot of people did not think that he was the man for the job, and he had an AD by the name of Tom Butters who stood by him faithfully, and now look at what the man has done. Probably the classiest guy in college athletics. R.J. Anderson with a second down and 10. They fake the reverse. Lots of time. Got a man, but he waited too long, and it's intercepted by Edward Reed. Ron, that's the 21st interception for the Miami defense. And D. Brown was wide open for R.J. Anderson. He just didn't see him. D. Brown comes out of the backfield, gets the fake. R.J. Anderson looking to the left. There's D. Brown running down the right side. Tried to get the ball to David Tyree and uh, Miami again in great field position. Yeah, Brown was working against uh, linebacker Chris Campbell, who was a little bit late getting there. Portis for his second series. He'll get the handoff on the left side. And cannot get by the, uh, the corner who comes in to make the tackle. It's Will Allen. D.J. Williams out front blocking on that play. Clock runs with 10 minutes and 35 seconds left until halftime, and so far, not much has gone right for this gentleman's ball club. They did have one drive where they took it down. They tried a 41-yard field goal as they ran out of steam, and that was wide left. See, the passing yardage, 158 to 10 so far. Portis again. No, it's Jackson, I beg your pardon. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, James Jackson. 33 Santana, yards. Santana Moss run made a block in the secondary that sprung the touchdown for James Jackson. Santana Moss, a lot of players can catch the football, uh, but you want your receivers to block. He blocked for James Jackson. And this is like a snowball going down the hill, just picking up momentum for Miami. Jackson now nine carries, 62 yards and two touchdowns. Seavers to attempt another extra point. And this one, he gets up very quickly, and it's good. The extra point is good. Santana Moss with a good block here. Run three. Blocks on Walker for the touchdown. Keon Walker is the man he took out as you look at Maurice Jackson. Takes it the distance. It has been all Miami in the first 20 minutes of this ball game. 23 to nothing. And Mike in plays gaining 10 yards or better already. Miami has eight in this contest. That's when you play a Miami or Florida State or Florida. You've got to keep the big plays down to have any chance of beating these teams because they have so much speed against you. They get the big play. You just got to limit those. Make them work the field. Too many easy touchdowns. And this crowd's deflated and uh, out of this ball game. We still got 10:09 to play until halftime. 
And the crowd just looking on in amazement. They have tried to do their part and did actually shake Dorsey on one series. But since then, he's been shaking them. Boy, high end of a This one is going to be about nine yards deep and will not be returned. Eight. Brian Kenny, let's uh, check with you quickly. Ron lets us show you what it's like outdoors in the south right now. Ole Miss and Georgia in a driving rain and Musa Smith getting the Bulldogs on the board. It's now 14-7 getting near the half. Ron? Okay. Well, the rain coming all through the south. You know, that ball game, Georgia came off that football game last week, Ron, that we had. And uh, they they were, uh, I thought they would be vulnerable to, a, to get beat by Ole Miss tonight. As they came out of that Auburn game, uh, they were not happy campers. By the way, the average start tonight, Syracuse their own 21, Miami their own 41. This time it's James Mungro is coming to tailback, and he'll have about four yards in the play. And some uh, serious discussions going on down on the on the field. James, James Mungro is more of their home run threat at the tailback position. He averages seven yards per carry. That was uh, Nick Romeo, who's the center, and uh, Damian Lewis, who were having uh, a little disagreement after the, the play was over. Here comes the blitz. The option, Anderson at the 25, and he'll be bumped out of bounds around the 27 by Al Blades. Blades is so close to the line of scrimmage, you've got to get him off of the running game. You've got to get him involved in the passing game. If he's going to play like he's playing, he's an extra defender up there against the run. You know, on that side, they're very large, too, because Blades is like 210. The corner on that side, Rump is over 200 pounds. Yeah, Mike Rump is six foot two. Which normally you think that's the size of a safety, but those youngsters obviously run well enough to play quarter or they wouldn't be out there. See Al Blades again, Ron. He's he's sitting up here as, as a linebacker. Drops back in coverage. Pressure on Anderson. And the ball is gotten away and incomplete. That was William Joseph, number 94, who was all over him. And again, it is a three and out. When Miami was winning national championships, they had a front four, always good defensive linemen. That's been the biggest difference I see in this football team. They get pressure with Damian Lewis and William Joseph and Jamal Green and Cornelius Green. So it's fourth down, eight minutes and 37 seconds. Left to play in this first half, and Miami on top, 23 to nothing. Let's see if they come after him this time. I don't think so. I think they'll return it again. See if they can spring Moss. I'll tell you, they, they almost got to it. Santana Moss with the fair catch, and they're going to say around the 42-yard line. So it's a 31-yard kick, and it was Kevin Beard who almost blocked that thing. Well, the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question, who was the last team to win a national title after losing a game in September? The answer, Colorado in 1990. They tied Tennessee in August, lost to Illinois in September, but went on to finish 10-1-1 for the AP national title. George play, Tech was the national champ in the UPI poll. Did they play Notre Dame in the bowl game? I can't remember if that was the year. Mike, I can't either. I think it was. We'll check. James Jackson, nothing doing this time as he is gang tackled and pushed back. Got to be about a yard and a half gain. Again, the field position's been so good for Miami because their defense has not allowed Syracuse to get anything. Well, that, that's Morgan trotting back on the field. He wants back in there. He wants to add the uh, tackle list. <laughs> Dorsey sets deep in the pocket, throws it, and got it complete near the 50-yard line, and I believe it's Shockey. Yep. Jeremy Shockey, the big sophomore, junior college transfer who has 
really been instrumental in a, a complete and total offense for the, the Miami Hurricane. The other thing Larry Coker said about Shockey is he in practice and this is what you want when you coach a pr player that practices every play like it's a Super Bowl and he said that's the attitude he takes on the practice field and it's no re I, I mean you've got to believe that helps him on this field and uh, has made him an outstanding tight end. He caught the pass against Florida, Florida State, State. Mm -hmm. and drive and it's nice to have a guy just come in and fall and come out of nowhere and be your tight end. <laughs> he wasn't even there to get work in the uh, in the spring. Spring or summer. So it's just inches short. And now Mercer Shockey and Robert Williams will come in. All three tight ends with the third down and inches. away from the ball the referee whistles the clock back in it's Mercer in motion and up over the top is the quarterback Dorsey a pretty good shot as he went over the top uh, he will have the first down Eric Downing down at the bottom of that stack Ken Dorsey has emerged as a leader with this offensive football he, team he is a cool customer too uh, he doesn't uh, no. you know, he, he really seems like at even at this early stage of his uh, college career to really have a grasp of this offense what they're looking for he really does John can Jimmy who does the TV for Miami uh, said he's just a real leader for this football team they believe in him Reggie Wayne in motion but they keep it on the ground and it'll go for a couple of yards. Domus uh, making the tackle. By the way, Ken Dorsey was so impressive in that final drive against Florida State. He hit uh, Santana Moss. This is the play that Mike was talking about. And the one coming up, Santana Moss. That's good for 10. And here comes the touchdown to Shockey. Right over the middle. And you can see he just threaded that one right there. 46 seconds left. And on that drive, Dorsey was 6 of 7 for 73 yards. Pretty good numbers against an awfully good Florida State defense. It's a very good defense. Second down and eight. Pumped it once. Going to go on top. And the man we were talking about just now, Shockey, is the guy I was looking for. And Ron, you're talking about the Florida State game and Brian McKinney, the big left tackle who you talked about in, the, in your open, uh, really held Jamal Reynolds down yeah. and they no sacks and only made one tackle now Jamal Reynolds was coming off a game and he was playing hurt but still Brian McKinney did a great job on the great uh, defensive end for Florida State Mike was hit this guy is a giant oh, six is. eight six nine I mean he is a what do you play the tuba in high school yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, third nice. down they need to take it to the 38 pressure off the corner and the pass incomplete intended for Wayne and I mean a very dangerous situation as Dorsey had a player knocked into him and hit him on the side of the knee yeah, Duke Pettyjohn got back there Simpkins got back the blocker watch the blocker gets knocked into Dorsey right there man number 80 the tight end yeah Robert, Robert Williams, Williams. They're using some at fullback tonight, and you think this could not have been a critical situation. Duke Pettyjohn just ran over Robert Williams. Second punt of the night by Miami. They let it go, bounds it to 10, and because of the hard astroturf, they bounced over the top. Or did they down it? No, one official said they did, the other said no, and it's going to come out to the 20. So there's a timeout on the field. 6.15 remaining until halftime. Miami, 23 to nothing. We'll be right back. We are back. Some of the uh, kiosk outside the stadium selling T-shirts and uh, Syracuse paraphernalia. Inside the dome, kind of quiet as uh, Syracuse got the noise going early but uh, it has been all Miami here comes Anderson and it's that option play again and nothing doing as Jamal Green 
Number 55 stayed right at home. And Adrian, let's check down with you again. Well, miraculously, Dan Morgan has come back in the game. He's been cleared, obviously, to play medically. Ron, this is one of the toughest kids in college football I've ever seen. They went into the locker room. He didn't want to wait for the film to be developed after they took the x-ray. They finally took a look at it and says, okay, there's no ligament damage. He says, all right, can I play without a shoe? I said, no, Dan. It's part of your uniform. You have to play with a shoe. Yeah, but my foot feels better if I don't have my shoe on. Oh, he's back on the field. Did they give him a larger shoe? No, actually smaller. I'll tell you about that shortly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clock runs with five minutes and 35 seconds left. Here comes the pressure. And guess who? It's Morgan. And the ball almost intercepted as Rump was the closest man to it. Woodcock, the intended receiver. And one very valuable lesson that R.J. Anderson's going to learn tonight, Mike Gottfried, is you can't throw into any kind of coverage when you're playing a secondary like this because they'll intercept it every time. They will. And uh, Dan Morgan's coming on the uh, trying to get to Anderson. I don't care what size shoes he's got on, but uh, he's he's been a factor in this defense. I'm waiting on Adrian to tell me the shoe story. <laughs> we'll get it from him in just a second. Third down and 13. They're two of seven on third down conversions tonight. They need to take it out to the 30 yard line to keep this one going. Anderson under pressure again and throws this one way too tall. Woodcock, the intended receiver. Uh, Adrian, the finish the shoe story. Yeah, they taped up his foot as tightly as they possibly could so that he really can't bend it or have any movement inside of a shoe that's half a size smaller now instead of 11 and a half. They went to an 11. He's going to play with some pain the rest of the night, but he will play if he has anything to say about it. Okay. Ron Schaefer, who missed the field goal, has done a good job punting the football. He's gotten high punts, so Santana Moss has not been able to return anything. The Syracuse Gunners, the yeah, two men good. on the outside, have done a good job with coverage, too. High pass from center, and he got this one away. Line drive. And Moss, well, it, it takes a huge Miami bounce, so there will not be a return. It uh, went away from Moss. 32 yards on the kick. Very fortunate to get that off. Next Saturday at ESPN, it's college game day at 11 a.m. Eastern, followed by Wake Forest battling ACC foe NC State. Then a primetime game at 7.30, it is Virginia taking on Michael Vick and the number seven Virginia Tech Hokies. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. James Jackson continues to operate at tailback. He had the 33-yard touchdown run just a few moments ago. Dorsey going to go on top. Got Santana Moss and just a little bit too far. Will Allen trying to make the cover, but as you could see, Santana was only a step away from adding the six more points. Yeah, Will Allen has a lot of respect for Santana Moss said he's better than last year he's a fast possession guy who runs great routes and got his hand on the football just couldn't bring it in he explodes at the line of scrimmage he's got so much speed this defense has had to play so much in the first half those DBs have already had to do a lot of running and now Miami will call a timeout to stop the clock at 507 that's their final timeout Back with more from Syracuse after this. Over a century ago, Syracuse University students flocked to tiny Holden Observatory to marvel at the heavens. Today, that same sense of wonder and excitement is alive and well in classrooms across campus. Students and faculty are engaged in research in the sciences and humanities that is advanced even by today's standards. And our alumni? Let's just say they're finding new ways to touch the stars. Syracuse University, believers in the art of becoming. The kick is away. It, it is good! Yeah! Boston College wins! Last play of the ball game to the tight end, Brominski. He Boston the ball! Boston Boston the ball! This kick is in the air. It is good! It is good! One of the greatest wins ever! Let that celebration begin! Well, the view from across campus looking back at the Carrier Dome. I like it clear like this. Uh, that white stuff is is fine in Christmas commercials, but uh, but we are indoors. Miami enjoying the warmth of the Carrier Dome inside. 
They got spanked here a couple of years ago, but tonight they're doing the spanking. 23 to nothing on top. And this man has had a lot to do with their success. Ken Dorsey has been outstanding. Second down to 10, and they go with the draw play to James Jackson. Not very much doing. There's a good second effort. He'll take it down to the 45, and you can see flags coming in from all angles. Clip Snell with the tackle. This mask. What else can go wrong for Paul Pascaloni's team? Boy, I don't know. Up. There's the face mask. James Jackson trying to work hard. Cliff Snell on the on the tackle. Cliff Snell number 43. One of the two players trying to replace are in the lineup. Dwight Freeney, who we have documented and injured and may not play again this year, with the lacerated spleen. Under five minutes left until halftime. Second down and short following that penalty. And it's Jackson. And very close to the first down as Clifton Smith will knock him down. Now they're going to bring in the change from across the way. Crowd trying to get a wave started here, but uh, not getting great participation. No, there's not enough enthusiasm in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Well, they finally got it going. DJ Williams in the ball game on third and short. Freshman fullback out of Concord, California. in motion. Dorsey will take it straight ahead with the quarterback sneak and he'll pick it up easily. Brian Kenny, let's check back with you again. Ron, coming up, Sports Center in game at the half. We'll have the Civil War, the Iron Bowl, the Apple Cup, half of the Rose Bowl equation figured out. The other half is up in the air. We'll have highlights of Washington, Washington State, and Chris Lee and Kirk talking about Florida and Florida State. Ron? All righty. 23 to nothing. Driving the football. The line of scrimmage at the 37. At Jackson again, big opening to the right, and it closed up quickly. Clifton Smith with a nice defensive play coming from that middle linebacking spot. So many weapons for this Miami football team. They can run the ball. They're, they've been impressive in the first half. Their defense is good. Kicking game solid. Offensively pretty good. They're going to take Reggie Wayne now and put him inside. Inside the hash run. Try motion loss to the field. Try to get those guys, those two wide receivers one on one. And Moss is the man he's looking for. I'm not so sure that that either slipped out of his hand or somebody got a hand on it. Holtzman was the guy putting pressure on. Do a lot of substituting Miami. Now they're going to play with three, three wide receivers. I'm impressed with Reggie Wayne. First, he's the leader in Miami career receptions with 167. You know, it's interesting. There are some pro scouts that like him better yeah. than Santana Moss because of his size. Clinton Portis is the lone setback. Wayne has one catch, 32 yards for a touchdown, and this one right here. Maybe a little miscommunication because Wayne turns around and looks back at his quarterback like, hmm, that's not what I was uh, running or looking for. Yeah, coverage will dictate sometimes the pattern, and uh, as the receiver's coming off, if he and the quarterback are not on the same page, 
That's when a route can break down. Freddie Capshaw will come into punt. That's the third time that the Kings have had to kick tonight. Malik Campbell is the deep man. Very high, trying to pooch this one. And they got their gunners downfield, and it got just right by the man on the outside that was there to touch it dead is Aaron Mosier. So 38 yards on the kick, and Syracuse will have the ball at the 20. So, Mike, Florida State, Florida a little bit later this evening. This one right here, uh, you know, what does Butch do? He's up 23 to nothing right now. If this thing gets any bigger, does he start putting some subs in the ball game, or does he keep on playing as number one? Well, I think he's got to score some points. I, I really believe that he's his offense, is, the last couple of series haven't hit on all cylinders, so they've got points, but maybe you get too, too many points too early, and they've lost concentration. Anderson. Yes, defense has defense really has not as Hitwood Reed playing awfully well is what uh, the defensive coaches told us and boy you could see right there. I, I still believe Ron that Miami's going to play Florida State in the championship game. Do you? I don't know how it's going to happen but I still believe they're going to face each other. Well at the first time they played it's one of the best football games that I thought I'd ever seen as far as talent on the field and just really going at each other. They're the two best teams I've seen. Now, Oklahoma I've only seen on television, but uh, Kansas State would have to beat Oklahoma for that to happen. Here comes the blitz off the corner and the screen pass. Mungo and hit from behind. Nice. Jamal Green. by Jamal Green is. Uh, he had gone rushing in, made the quick turn, came back and hit him and made the stop. They close. Their closing speed is so fast that when you look like you have something, they just out of nowhere, somebody closes on and makes the tackle. Eight third down situations for Syracuse tonight. Here they come. And they get it out in the flat. Have this one to Tyree. And he'll be tackled just as he goes across the 20. And now the home folks are getting a little bit impatient. Is Al Blades is there to make the tackle. Man coverage, Ron. Everybody was up tight on the screen play. No Santana Moss has not had an opportunity really. He did return one. We'll see if Schaefer can kick it high and long and let his uh, cover team get down there this time. Schaefer's done the job in the punting game. He's trying to take as much time as he can. High driving spiral. Moss will return from the 31 yard line. Got a wall, he sure does. And finally just has to run out of bounds. Caught his shoe on the turf somehow. And Mungro is the man who escorted him out of bounds. But that is a huge return after a 49-yard kick. And that's what they do to you, Ron. Similar to Florida State, they keep the pressure on you in the kicking game and good defense and good offense. 31-yard return, Yeah, Mike. and the deep throws and big plays. And uh, Miami, again, there you saw him trip a little bit. But they have 36 seconds. No timeouts left. That's right. They did take that last one. The offense did as you look at uh, Santana Moss getting a breather on the sideline. They got Reggie Wayne lined up against Willie Ford in the short side of the field. 84 Andre King has come in and he is the man at the bottom of the screen. And they dump it back into the short side of the field to Portis. Portis will get what he can does not get out of bounds inside the 25 yard line and it's Marlon Greenwood who makes the stop and look at Miami quickly bouncing off the ground and setting up. Yeah they know the first down is going to stop the clock. They want to be ready to go as soon as the referee puts the ball in play. Just like that two minute drill that you work on every afternoon in practice. And he's just going to throw it spike it stop the clock at 22 seconds.
Yeah, I keep looking in the short side of the field. Reggie Wayne lined up there against Willie Ford. Willie Ford's giving him a big cushion. You know, Mike, you got to you got to take at least one shot into the end zone. And, and if I'm Syracuse, I got to be taking a serious and close look at number 88, Jeremy Shockey, the tight end. Yeah. He's trying to call a timeout. He doesn't have one left. And that's going to be delay a game. delay of game. Dorsey came out and called the timeout and didn't have one. So five yards will be stepped off against the hurricane. Not going to hurt him, all Ron, nah. because it gives you a little bit more room to throw it in the end zone. <laughs> he, he came out from under center, signal timeout. The coaches are going. <laughs> yeah, no, keep going, that's the line going. of scrimmage. <laughs> Is knocked loose by Pettijohn. Picked Pettijohn. up by Syracuse, but his arm was going forward, says the referee who was right behind the play. But Pettijohn has really played well tonight. This offensive line, Ron, it, their Pettijohn has got to the quarterback a couple times, but they've only allowed eight sacks in nine games, so Miami's offensive line pretty good. Pettijohn just get, beats him with an inside swim move. Guess who he wanted? He was looking. That's Shockey at the top of the screen, and he was covered, but that's the man he was looking for. 17 seconds left. think so. They well, you know, my, field goal. They're trying to get the field goal unit on the field. That Six a, seconds down to five. Kick plenty long enough and wide right. No good. That wasn't uh, the way you planned it. That was a strange sequence. Yeah. I mean Dorsey just kind of casually ran walked. off the field. Yeah. Syracuse was heading to the locker room. So much halftime with their score, Miami 23 and Syracuse nothing. Now at Sports Center in game, Ryan Kenny with the Buick halftime report. Hi, Ron. Thank you very much again. It is rivalry weekend. You've got the Civil War, you've got the Rose Bowl on the line. Floyd of Rosedale, South Carolina, and Clemson coming down to one play. Speaking of the Civil War, we've got the highlights in Florida State. Florida, the Chief is ready, so are we. Welcome to Sports Center in game. Time for the Buick halftime report. And a great weekend in college football. We start with the Civil War. It goes back to 1894, Oregon and Oregon State, and they've never both been this good. Nine and one, and nine and one. Oregon goes to the Rose Bowl with a win. Oregon State needs a win and a loss from Washington, but we'll get to them. Start with this one. Oregon, Oregon State, yes, the Rose Bowl is there in sight. Beavers, though, get up on top 7-0, and then Jonathan Smith to Robert Prescott, 49-yard touchdown. Oregon State takes a 14-0 lead. Second quarter, Beavers up 17-0. Joey Harrington answers back for the Ducks. It's 17-7. Now, Oregon has won four out of the last five in this rivalry and four of the last five at Oregon State. But now Ken Simonton busting loose. He's into the end zone. 23-7, Beavers out on top. Fourth quarter, 10-point game. Ducks are driving. Harrington is dropped. Ball comes loose. Picked up and recovered by DeLorence Grant. And Oregon State winning this one, 23-13. to 13. Dennis Erickson, he's been involved with Miami, Florida State, been involved with Washington, Washington State. Now he takes this one, beating the Ducks, and they both have one loss. So that means Oregon State now hoping for a Washington loss, and they will go to the Rose Bowl. Take a look. Apple Cup, Washington and Washington State. Rick Neuheisel pointed out this week, hey, we're still in for the national title. But first, hold on, Washington State, four and six, and has played tough, but Marcus Tui Asasopo frees it, close to the line of scrimmage, lets it go, and into Wilbur Hooks in the back of the end zone. Rick Neuheisel thought it was a touchdown, officials will know. Tui Asasopo was past the line of scrimmage, but 20 to nothing right now, Washington in a commanding position and in an excellent position to go to the Rose Bowl, leading again 20 to nothing right now. All Washington has to do is win this game, and they will again go to the Rose Bowl to meet. Well, we'll tell you about that right now. To the Big Ten, and again, this is the last year that it will be a Pac-10 Big Ten game. Michigan and Ohio State will start there, both with a shot 
at the Rose Bowl going in. For Michigan, they need to win this one and have Purdue and Northwestern lose. For Ohio State, they need to win this one and have Purdue lose. We'll get to Purdue first, though. Michigan and Ohio State pick this up. Get right to crunch time, fourth quarter. Michigan leading it 31-19, to but... Steve Belisari to Kenyon Rambo. Touchdown, Ohio State within five, 31-26. Ohio State gets the ball now. It's fourth and one on their own 18. They need this. Still some time left, but no, snuffed out. Jonathan Wells stopped short. John Cooper might have one last chance, but on the ensuing drive right from there, Michigan. Fourth and goal, they go for it. Drew Henson seals it into the end zone. And John Cooper, for all his success, he's had tremendous success. Always throw that in there. But he is 2-10-1 now against Michigan. They played this one in front of a record crowd of over 98,000. 38-26, Michigan with the win. Now, Michigan needed a lot of help. How about Purdue? The old oaken bucket. And this time, this year, the Rose Bowl on the line for Purdue. Need a win, and they get back in. Back in 1966, Bob Greasy led Purdue over Indiana to the school's last Rose Bowl appearance. How about Drew Brees? He hands it off to Montrell Lowe. He's in for the touchdown, 27-7. to Indiana, 3-17 coming in. Couldn't stop Montrell Lowe. 208 yards on the ground. Purdue takes a big lead, and they do win easily. Purdue goes back to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1966. That's the season, the 1967 Rose Bowl. 41-13, to the final. Boilermakers clinching. Only their second ever Rose Bowl berth. Again, it was Bob Greasy way back when. Here are the standings. Purdue, Michigan, Northwestern all tied for the top at 6-2. and two, But Purdue takes all tiebreakers. And Drew Brees will go to Pasadena in his senior year. Right here in the Big East, Miami and Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. It's all hurricanes. We'll be back after this. Sports Center in game. This halftime report is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealers. And we get back to the Pac-10, USC and UCLA, usually one of the better rivalries in college football, but this year after some early excitement, bit of a disappointment. And now, according to the Orange County Register, USC will fire head coach Paul Hackett early next week. Has two years left on his deal, but it's a buyout clause in his contract. He'll get bought out for $800,000 USC at one and six has already clinched last place in the Pac-10. Pick this one up though, I pick up the highlights. Second quarter, third and goal here for UCLA. Corey Paws is back into Ed Iremia Stansberry. In for the touchdown and UCLA up on top, 21-14, but USC coming back. Trojans, Carson Palmer in the year, lost that up. Nice grab too, Kareem Kelly with that. 21-21, they're now at the half. UCLA at 6-4 and four, trying to get a win here. UCLA has not trailed in a game, but every time the Bruins have taken the lead, UCLA has come back to tie. Now, big game, Stanford and Cal, the 103rd meeting. They've had some wild finishes, obviously, but overtime, it's 30-30. to 30. Cal's already had its chance, couldn't get it done. Casey Moore, get that from Randy Fasani. And Stanford wins here in overtime. Cal with a last gasp did tie this one up, but Stanford rules in overtime, and it ties the longest win streak in the series history, which is saying something with six straight wins for Stanford. Sweet Sue Tomahawk. It's Northwestern and Illinois. That's the trophy, the Tomahawk. Sweet Sue, first quarter, no score. Man, there'll be a lot of scoring in this one. Damian Anderson busting loose and running through on Illinois. 39 carries, 179 yards for Damian Anderson. Northwestern up big, scored early and off, and also Anderson going over 1,900 yards. He breaks Darnell Autry's school record, and 61 to 23, Northwestern with the win, but again with the Purdue win. They did not go into the Rose Bowl, but they do get an impressive win to get to eight and three. Right here, the Hurricanes impressive. James Jackson with this touchdown. Miami up 23 to nothing. Sports centering game comes back right after this. Welcome back to Sports Center in Game, the Buick Halftime Report. And this is still a big game. Auburn and Alabama, the Iron Bowl in Tuscaloosa and at Bryant Denny Stadium for the first time. Mike Dubose, of course, done after this. He's already lost his job in Alabama trying to avoid an eight loss season. It would be its worst since 1955. For Auburn, pick up the highlights. They have a chance at the SEC West title. 
Former Alabama running back Sean Alexander. Hoping to inspire the tide. Joe Willie himself is there. Yeah, that's Joe Willie. Third quarter, 6 nothing Auburn. Ben Leard's pass into the end zone. No, intercepted by Milo Lewis. Alabama ball. Mike Dubose thinking they were down 6 nothing, but the driving rain, one touchdown, that could be it. But fourth quarter, Laird here to DeAndre Green. And that's brought down again. Hard to move the ball in the conditions. It was a 31-yard pass play. It led to another field goal. And 9-0 is the final. It's the first eight-loss season since 1955 for Alabama. And with the win, Auburn gets that win and the surprising loss for Mississippi State. Arkansas beats them 17-10. And Auburn clinches the SEC West. Right now, Ole Miss leading Georgia. It's 14-13. That's now in the third quarter. And the big one coming up this evening, of course, Florida and Florida State. Think about this. Last home game for 25 Florida State seniors. This senior class has gone three and two over a five-year stretch against the Gators. They've been to three national title games. They've won every conference title they have ever played for. Since 1990-12 meetings, six times both teams have been in the top five. This is the big one. Chris Lee and Kirk are there. We checked in with them just a few minutes ago. They've got the overview on the day in college football. Chris? Well, a wild scene here in Tallahassee. More than 10 years since this game's been played on a campus at night. Folks have had all day to get ready and consume antifreeze because it is a very cold evening inside Chris Winkie. We told you all day battling flu-like symptoms. Seems to be feeling better, but he is not feeling 100%. He's going to have to tough it out one more time in a big ball game as he did in Miami. Well, around the country today, some things were clinched, some things we didn't expect. Some things we did expect. Coach, in the Big Ten, Purdue marches on to the Rose Bowl. I think you said something about Purdue, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, good. Purdue went to the Rose Bowl because they beat Indiana. And Drew Brees, you got to give Drew Brees a lot of credit. Drew Brees beat Indiana four straight times for Purdue. That's a wonderful record for him. Now, Drew Brees is not only a great football player, but he represents what's best in college football. And I'm really proud of Joe Tiller, Drew Brees, and Purdue going to the Rose Bowl. They'll represent the Big Ten in great Big Ten fashion. Yeah, who they're going to play, we don't know, but I agree with you 100%. Joe Tiller, congratulations. Well earned. As far as who they will play, right now Washington controls their own destiny. If the Huskies are able to finish off Washington State, then they will go to the Rose Bowl. But Oregon State today against Oregon, hyped up game out in the pac -10. Oregon State got it done on defense. Five interceptions and a total of six turnovers. Today, it was about the Beaver defense getting it done in Corvallis. Big win for Dennis Harris. Yes. And the shock was Arkansas goes into Mississippi State and wins. Congratulations to the Hogs. Auburn goes to the SEC championship game. Now to the situation here. You can see this is very, very tough for both Florida quarterbacks. They have not made mistakes. They've been great in the red zone. Can they keep it up tonight, though? Well, first of all, I think this ball game is going to depend on who runs the football the best. Remember, in this football game, 10 times out of 12, the team that has run the ball best has won it. I think the home crowd, Florida State's running attack, because this is the worst running team that Florida's had in the Steve Spurrier. I think the Knowles win it at home. Coach, I, I think the running game is talked about a lot in this rivalry, but I think you can throw it out tonight. I think it's about big plays from the wide receivers. And in that case, I'd give Chris Wanky, Snoop Minutes, and watch Javon Walker tonight from Florida State. He's a big, tall receiver. He can make a lot of things happen. Florida State's going to try to isolate their receivers against the Florida corners, and I think that'll be the difference in the game. I like Florida State to win at home. Well, the folks here have had one eye on a Diamond Vision screen that has the Miami game on, but now their focus will shift inside. This ball game coming up on ABC Sports. A cold but hot <laughs> night in Tallahassee. It's Christmas. Back Chris, guys, thank you very much. Yes, indeed, they are underway. Florida and Florida State. Chris Wenke with the flu and all is back and passing. And that is 31st touchdown pass of the year to Atrus Bell. Seminoles are on the board on the Gators in Tallahassee, 7-0. They are underway, number three versus number four. Well, here, number two, Miami. So up big so far, 23-0. We're at the half. We've got more college football coming up. A university is a journey of discovery, transformation, achievement.
University of Miami. Go and change the world. Back here, Sports Center in game. Brian Kenny here with you. South Carolina and Clemson. And Lou Holtz looks like he has a win. Third and 12 for Woody Dantzler and Clemson. 14 13, South Carolina. And here we go. Third and 12. And there it is. Woody Dantzler to Rod Gardner inside the 10 from there. Clemson spikes the ball, stops the clock in the final seconds. Going for the field goal. Aaron Hunt up and good. And the win. Tommy Bowden. Intrastate battle. An outstanding game. And they come from behind to edge them 16 to 14. Notre Dame over Rutgers 45 to 17. Notre Dame now 8 and 2. Number one, Oklahoma. Got a test from Texas Tech. Former offensive coordinator Mike Leach. But 27 13, Oklahoma beats Texas Tech. And Oklahoma is now 10 and 0. Number one in the nation in everything. And TCU prevents UTEP from clinching the whack 47 to 14. LaDainian Tomlinson with 305 yards on the ground. Second half is coming up. Enjoy it, everybody. So we're back in Syracuse, 23 to nothing, our halftime score. And off the top of the telecast, Mike Godfrey, we talked in terms of maybe the most complete offense of any team in America. These guys tonight have shown that they're complete on both sides of the football. They really are, Ron. Uh, Ken Dorsey, the quarterback, in complete control of this offense. They got so many weapons, and they can hurt you in so many ways. And plus, their defense is playing well. Tight end down the middle. Shockey catches the ball. Big play. Jeremy Shockey, then they came back with a running game. James Jackson hit him up inside, got a touchdown. Then Reggie Wayne is going to catch this long pass for a touchdown. Santana Moss had a couple catches and then hurts you in the special teams. And then you add to the defense. A two of nine for Syracuse on third downs, only 27 rushing yards, 15 passing yards. Total domination in this first half. 29 snaps of the football for 42 yards. Don't need to tell you that that is less than no. two per try. Schaefer with the kick. And it landed in bounds, so it'll come out to the 20 yard line. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us, Big All right, Ron. Miami quarterback Ken Dorsey did take a shot to his head close to the end of the first half. They thought maybe more than just a slight ring of the bell happened. Well, it did not. No concussion, no nothing. So now, that begs my question to Butch Davis. How long do you leave your starters in? Because he claims it doesn't matter as far as BCS is concerned whether I win by 20 or whether I win by 1,000. However, I will not put my starters in jeopardy. So, Ron, it's going to be very interesting if Syracuse can't score here to see how long those starters offensively and defensively do stay in. Okay, we'll keep a close eye. Santana Moss in motion. And this is Jackson. James Jackson picked up and uh, thrown down after a game by Keon Walker. Makes a defense play along And when you consider that as far as positive yardage in the first half, that Syracuse has 42, and in case you didn't see the entire first half, 13 of it came off a fumble. Fumble. And we said at that time, that was the best play they had. It was. It's a key series for Syracuse at the start of the third quarter. They got any chance to come back in this football game, they can stop Miami on this series. Dorsey right over the middle, and he gets it to D.J. Williams, the big fullback. And he lumbers out to around the 30. Should be enough for the first down as Marlon Greenwood is there to make the tackle on him. Yeah, Marlon Greenwood had problems uh, bringing D.J. Williams down. D.J. Williams looks like he has good hands coming out of the backfield. Also, pretty good sized fellows you would expect from a fullback at uh, 6'2", 235 pounds. They did just what they wanted to do, Ron. Took this crowd out of the game. You, you don't hear any noise here. Jackson on the counter tray and uh, good to the pass. Smith is there. Flag is down. Also Walker down at the bottom of the pile. And it's going to be holding against the Hurricanes. Adrian talked about when they came up here two years ago and got beat 66 to 13. So they had that revenge on their mind coming in here. But they immediately took the crowd out of this game. 
now what you want if you're Butch Davis you don't want this to turn into a sloppy ball game and in the second happen. half that can happen yeah, because, because you, you lose your focus yeah you lose your focus and you lose your intensity and you go through the motions and uh, what Adrian's question to him was uh, you know how many points is necessary I, I think the system says you got to score and score a bunch. So the penalty pushes it back to the 20 yard line. This is the play where they take Moss in motion and try to hit him. They've hit him on every motion play they've tried to throw to him. Looks like they were trying to go to him again. Duke Pettijohn was across the line of scrimmage pointing at the tackle. However, no flag had been thrown and a whistle had blown. Now Pettijohn's excited now. He says this game's not over. He plays hard all the time. 251 pound senior. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, go first down. So what we were just talking about. Miami getting off to a sloppy start. Yeah. Yeah. Peter John being asked to uh, to accept a different role this year. Last year had ten and a half sacks, but they asked him this year to be more of a controlled lineman. That's him right there, Ron. He's played well in his first half. D.J. Williams, the ball carrier, not much there. And, and you know, if you're Butch Davis and Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, that that uh, Paul Pascalone is going to challenge his defense the second half because we talked about it in the open. The only things they had going for him in this game tonight was the dome and defense. And the dome has not been a factor. And defense, they, they, they even though they have made some mistakes and given up some big plays, they still have done some good things. Now they have to draw the line in the sand and say this is over. Now we've got to carry our part and hope the offense gets going. Second down to 25. They're going to take it all the way out to the 40 yard line and pick up the first down. And just a little bit overthrown. Reggie Wayne is the man that he was looking for. Willie Ford is doing a nice job at the line of scrimmage. Now I don't know if he's if he's holding on to Reggie Wayne or not, but he's doing a good job of keeping him from getting off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he's grabbing cloth, but see, he couldn't get off the ball, Ron, so he couldn't get out in the route. Willie Ford trying to be physical at the line of scrimmage. I'm not so sure that Reggie Wayne didn't hurt himself either. He just went, went slowly off the field. We'll keep an eye on that. Romberg goes over the football on third down and very long. Here comes the blitz, and it's Jackson in the running play. 25, 30, and all the way out to the 33. Tackled by Marlon Greenwood. It's a gain of 18. Marlon Greenwood was playing defensive end on that play and got caught inside. There's Marlon Greenwood right here, number 52. And he's going to get caught inside, and then the draw pops out. James Jackson picks up good yardage for the punt. Fourth punt, Capshaw. He's a sophomore out of Rock Springs, Wyoming. Boy, this is a dandy. Very high, very long. All the way back to the 20-yard line is uh, Malik Campbell. After making the fair catch, it's a 21. That's a 46-yard kick and nothing on a return. And I'll tell you what, it was right, Mike. That's the trainer with Wayne. I don't know if they're headed to the locker room. It would appear that's, yep. That's the other thing you worry about. Adrian mentioned that. You know, your injuries to your ball club. But when you lose focus, sometimes little things start going wrong. Too easy in the first half. First and ten, sir. So we'll get a report on Reggie Wayne, the senior out of Marrero, Louisiana. Munro operates a tailback this time, and they give it to him. Munro runs it up inside, going to have five, six, maybe seven yards. Edward Reed out of the secondary quickly makes the tackle. Ron Syracuse's offense. Now the defense did what they were supposed to do. Now R.J. Anderson has to get something started. You got to get better mix 
in the second half than you did in the first half. There was no running game, no passing game, no offense uh, for Syracuse in the first half. They got to come up with something here in the second half to stalemate the speed of Miami. Here comes the blitz off the corner. Running play up the middle, big opening. 5, 10, 15, and almost down to the 50 yard line is Mungro. It's a gain of 23. And that's what you need. You need to get this crowd back in the game. You need to take a little pressure off your red shirt freshman quarterback. James Mungro hits up inside. Looked like it was going to be an option on the outside. Mungro is tackled by Blades and Reed finally in the secondary. Lewis missed him at the line of scrimmage. Had his hands all over. off to the first man through this time and there's uh, not much for George Scott Adrian Karsten what do you have for us on the injury caught up on the with the training staff as Reggie Wayne was going off the field hip pointer practically there's very little natural padding on his right side that's where he was hit doesn't have any very good artificial padding either just because he likes to be fast that's the initial outlook right now I'll have more for you in just a few minutes okay Adrian good job of hustle there comes the blitz. You can see him creeping up. Anderson quickly gets it away. Has it complete to Woodcock. And that's enough for the Syracuse first down. That's 11 yards. But Cannon defensively. They caught him in the blitz, Ron, and they blocked it well. And they gave R.G. Anderson time enough to find Pat Woodcock against Philip Buchanan, number 31. It's man coverage all the way. You get everything blocked, and then you find your receiver Woodcock against uh, Buchanan in man coverage. First down. Good drive. Good looking drive for Syracuse. Malik Campbell in motion. But they give it to the tailback. And Monroe is uh, tackled by Al Blades. Close to the 35 yard line. Al Blades has been playing with a, with a torn bicep, uh, which has to be a very painful injury, but uh, the youngster really hasn't missed a bunch. This is only the second time tonight that Syracuse has been in Miami territory in nine drives. They've got to be able to take advantage of this. They missed a field goal on the last time in there. Here comes the option on second down and six. The pitch. Monroe. Close to the 30 yard line. Knocked down at the 31 and it's Dan Morgan who will make the tackle. Brian Kenny, what do you have for us? Brown, well, let's go to Tallahassee, Florida, and Florida State. Jesse Palmer, the senior quarterback, seven for ten passing so far. The seventh into the end zone touchdown to Aaron Walker, seven-seven, still in the first quarter. Ron. Well, I guess it's going to be musical quarterbacks tonight for the Florida Gators. A shootout. More experienced quarterback in a big game, Jesse Palmer. Mungro, five carries, 39 yards. He Miami. has 36 of them this half. Miami's going to take a timeout, Ron, on defense. Third down and short, so we'll come back and take a look at it after we break at 825 left in the third. This week's We are back 23 to nothing. Troy Nunes, who was the starting quarterback, sophomore out of Butler, Pennsylvania. Last two starts. Eight two touchdowns and eight interceptions. And one of those so costly in a game that uh, they should have beaten Virginia Tech in here. We may see him in the second half. I guess who just came sprinting out of the locker room? Reggie Wayne. Woodcock open now back over the delay to the tight end. He just missed him. Ron, they've run this play forever. When Dick McPherson was coaching here, but something happened to Graham Manley. Yeah, he may have he didn't got held or something. He because, didn't get re released quick enough. Yeah. That's the play, and that the one that they beat uh, Virginia Tech yes, in here. Yes, and they, they've always done that, and, uh, but I don't think Graham Manley got a free release here. So this is going to be a field goal attempt of 48 yards. And it's a fake. Noons is going to throw the pass back and it is going to be intercepted by Miami and that's Edward Reed. 
And actually, all Reed had to do was just knock the ball down, and he picked up another 15 yards. Ron, it was played well by Miami. They expected the uh, fake field goal. Show will take a break. 8.09 remaining third quarter. Hohenzi the intended receiver, but Reed makes the pickoff. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Tostitos. Dig in, kick back, stay all season. And by Chrysler, we're reinventing the passion for driving. Welcome back to Syracuse. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, to Adrian Carson, a very talented group of uh, ESPN uh, technicians, photographers, video folks. And uh, Reggie Wayne came back on the field. And we'll look to see if uh, he gets some more playing time here shortly. Now Shockey came out of his stance when at the line of scrimmage Eric Downing came across and flags were thrown. Miami has not looked sharp this half. No, they, they have lost their focus. But they're one big play about getting it back. <laughs> well, that's the truth. This penalty is going to go against uh, Syracuse. After the penalty up to the 21-yard line, it will be first. There's Reggie Wayne. As Adrian said, a hip pointer on him. James Jackson, the tailback this time. That's D.J. Williams, the fullback. And they give it to Jackson. Not much there as Marvin Greenwood doing a nice job of uh, knocking him down. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? We have very obviously a frustrating night for the Syracuse defense, in part because the nation's leading sack leader, uh, sack leader rather, Dwight Freeney, is out. Dwight, first of all, how are you feeling? How's the spleen? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, just a crazy injury. I don't even feel it, but, you know, the doctors say I have to sit out, so. As a matter of fact, you do. Frustrating for the defense tonight because all respect intended, I don't know that you would have like the four and a half sacks you did against Michael Vick because this is a very different offensive attack and a very different quarterback. Most definitely. They have a real quick three-step drop. It's real hard to get to the quarterback, so you know, we have to come with safeties and corners and try to get to them real quick. It's real hard. Three-step drop. In situations, Marlon Greenwood has really been expected to take your place. What kind of coaching? How have you been able to help him here tonight? Oh, I kind of tell him certain techniques, things I know from playing defensive end since he's going on a third down situation so I kind of help him out as far as the sets and certain moves. Thanks for taking the time Dwight. I'll let you get back to your job and get yourself help. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Okay Adrian thanks a million. If you want to sound really smart during the summer and people are talking about who the better players are in America go ahead and pencil him in as your All-American at defensive end or one of them anyway. He is really an outstanding player. Passed on a little bit too far in front of D.J. Williams made the catch and looks as though he is going to have the first down though. Ron you can go to the barber shop or wherever right. you want to go and talk about Dwight Freeney because we saw him against Virginia Tech he just disrupted Virginia Tech's whole entire offense that night uh, number 54 coming off the corner he is hit Michael so Vick and then he comes back into the picture makes the tackle on Michael Vick again Michael Vick again you know, he was a human highlight film and, that night and you know that's a veteran offensive line with Virginia Tech. You don't do that kind of thing to them. Very good offensive line. Flag is down. I think you can see Syracuse jump. I believe Simpkins is the man who came across the line of scrimmage. Holtzman will make the tackle. But I believe it's going to be a second offsides against the defense on this uh, series. Reggie Wayne back in the ball game. Brian Kenny, let's check back with you. Ron, we get back to Florida and Florida State. We showed you the touchdown pass from Jesse Palmer. Well, Chris Wakey got the ball back and right away, very quickly, right there. Marvin Minnis, 34 yards, 14-7 late in the first. Whoa. Ron, he's going to win the Heisman Trophy tonight in this ball game. He's going to win it or lose it in this ball game, and he's off to winning it. Boy, I can't believe he's having to play with the flu. Here's Reggie Wayne. Play action. Gets it off at Shockey. Breaks a tackle and Shockey out to the 45 yard line and now the 46. Keon Walker finally pushed him out of bounds, but it's a gain of 13. Here's another youngster that's going to be on some All American yeah, list he, next he, year. He, really, sophomore, 6'6, 245. Great speed, got great hands. 
and works well with his quarterback Ken Dorsey if you have a tight end that can catch the football it just means so much to your wide receivers your quarterback uh, and a tight end that runs a four five five yes <laughs> you get to work him down the middle you get to work him against linebackers he's got three catches for 53 as we see Jackson and Jackson turns the corner and a good second effort there by him is Jamil Dumas on the tackle I get the feeling this is the drive that's going to cash all the chips in because I think Miami's going to go down the field here I believe they're going to score and uh, turn out the lights because uh, they, they're methodical now now we talked about losing focus a little bit ago but they look to me like they've regained it now and they're doing it on the ground very workmanlike yeah That's Santana Moss at the bottom of your screen and they give it to DJ Williams not much there for the fullback Duke Pettijohn, who has had an outstanding game in uh, this one tonight, is there to, to make the tackle. Ron, he's second in sacks with seven and a half for this ball club behind Dwight Freeney, and he has 13 tackles for losses. And you have two bookends like Pettijohn and uh, Freeney. That's pretty good defense. Dick McPherson, early in the year, the former coach here, said that uh, this may be Syracuse's best defense. Yeah. Chris Mack met his lovely wife earlier this evening. Jackson not going to have it. That's a good hit by Clifton Smith. Clifton Smith had seven tackles in the first half. Well, just as soon as I said, I thought they'd go down and drive down for the <laughs> touchdown. Syracuse <laughs> came up with some big plays. Two plays stopping the running game. Sure, we're going to see Freddie Capshaw. Fifth punt of the night by the Miami Hurricanes. So the lights are still on, Ron. Oh, well, he took his time on that one, and he almost got it blocked. That's going to go all the way to the end zone. One of the things that Butch said the other day, 2.0 seconds on his kicks. He's really quick. Quick. So we're going to take a timeout. Dumas almost got the block. They're working hard. Music to the ears of every customer. Thanks, Gus, here at the Varsity. Of course, you're in upstate New York. You know that buffalo wings are going to be pretty popular. But in order to get the whole Varsity experience, you got to hit the hot sauce. There you go. Generously. Oh, and by the way, the Orangemen do beat the Hurricanes tonight. They're going to do the same thing to their banner they did at Temples and West Virginia's. Turn it upside down. I also think they turned the BCS upside down, too, Ron. <laughs> Ron, he picked, he picked the one that didn't have the sauce on it. <laughs> hey, Adrian's stomach is a little, a little funny sometimes. Uh, interesting how a lot of the Ask Adrian's wind up being something around food. That's right. I think forget about turning that flag upside down. D. Brown, the tailback. He gets the handoff. Bounces it to the outside. Still hustling after about a seven-yard gain. Edward Reed is the man who was holding on to him. It's a good tackle by Edward Reed out of the secondary. This is an impressive group of defensive backs. They tackle well. They have 22 interceptions. Uh, they, uh, they make things happen. Second and three. Reed has five tackles. All are solo. And, of course, he's got two interceptions tonight. Miami showing blitz. And on the option play, Anderson will keep it. And it's going to be his longest game of the night as he is out over the 40-yard line. Chris Campbell finally makes the stop. Gain of 14. Ron, one good thing for uh, that's happened, uh, Memphis Touchdown Club honored Syracuse for their graduation rates with a trophy uh, for excellence in academics. So they can be proud of that. Well, you know, one of the young men uh, on that front, Nick Romeo, number 61, the center. Uh, he's on the AD's uh, honor roll, which has got to be three, four, or better. Uh, he's an engineering major. That's a good student athlete. Pumped it, going to go on top. Hard to do against a team that is speedy as this. Uh, Maurice Jackson, the intended receiver. 
I'll tell you, the safety came all the way across the field. He hung it up a little high. Edward Reed is the safety, Ron, you're talking about. And uh, the center fielder, you're going to see him right here. He's sitting back in center field, and he sees now the uh, pump and the go route, and he breaks over, and he should have intercepted this football. Just went right through his hands. Well, they've got 22 interceptions on the year, two tonight, and as we mentioned, both by Edward Reed. And he's only a junior of St. Rose, Louisiana. Option back to the open side of the field, and good heavens, what a hit by Edward Reed. Yeah, you can just keep uh, talking about Edward Reed. First place, intercepting a pass. Now he comes up as a linebacker, and they know the option's coming, and uh, Edward Reed with the ankle tackle on R.J. Anderson. All back at the 37. Third down and 14. They get two extra defensive backs into the ball game. And let's see if Miami comes after them or or what. My, uh, Syracuse is going to go from the shotgun. Anderson under pressure and throws that one too far in front of Woodcock. And it was Damian Lewis who was coming through with the pressure at number 92 getting by the blocker. Good pressure out of the All-American defensive tackle. Seventh punt of the night by Syracuse. Ron, you got to credit Mike Schaefer now. He's kicked off, attempted one field goal, punts all the time. I mean, this is an active guy here. Another good punt. Yep, this spiral is going to turn over. Santana Moss has to signal for the fair catch, and he makes it just across the 20-yard line. 43 yards. Well, Thanksgiving night on ESPN College Football tonight, 7.30 Eastern. Then at 8, the Egg Bowl. Number 13, Mississippi State heads to Oxford to battle the Ole Miss Rebels. Bulldogs are looking for their third consecutive win on Thanksgiving night. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Ole Miss banged up round two going into that Georgia game. I saw they were leading 14-13 midway of the third quarter. Have not seen an update, update since then. Just over two minutes to play in the third quarter here. Clinton Portis back in the ball game and a nice job of stringing the play out. Portis going to have to pay for it. The man who turned it in was Holtzman. J.R. Johnson will make the tackle, but Holtzman is the guy with the contain that strung it out. Yeah, Holtzman has taken over for uh, Dwight Freeney tonight. Started his career as a linebacker. Talking to the coaches, they talked about how competitive Holtzman is. And it's in Miami, Miami going to pick up a penalty here. Block below the knee. Illegal block against the offense. Half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. Now this is where if you have any chance, Ron, is it get a turnover down here. Your offense struggling, they can't drive the ball the length of the field against the defense. You got to make something happen right here. Portis breaks it into the secondary. Out the way out to the cross the 20. That's Keon Walker holding on to him for dear life after a gain of 13. And a good job again by Miami's offensive line. And a fairly young offensive line, Ron. Only one senior, number 79, Greg LaFair. He left guard. So a line that will come back intact next year. Including Bryant McKinney, the, uh, the huge left tackle that we've talked so much about tonight. Here's Portis again behind those blockers. He's going to have about five yards, finally pushed down at the 25. 
J.R. Johnson defensively, and now it's going to be a third down, and they need about six to pick up the first down. Yeah, you're talking about McKinney. Uh, Larry Coker said he's the best left tackle we've ever had at Miami, so that that's big words uh, for all the great players they've had at the University of Miami, the offensive line, the big guy. you like to line up opposite him? <laughs> It'd be like trying to get around a condominium. Third down, they need to take it to the 31-yard line. Yeah, that's going to be pass interference. Not much question at uh, Walker. Keon Walker. Santana Moss, the intended receiver. Santana Moss, not real big. You know what? Ten. A late flag came in, and I don't know if they're going to call unsportsmanlike against Santana they, because they, he turned around and was uh, was woofing at uh, Walker. Let's see if we don't, might not have an unsportsmanlike as well. Pass interference against the defense will be a spot foul. First down. Nope. No, that was just a late flag that they just... Of, of reassurance. Yeah. Reassurance. That was the third flag that came in there. Twenty-seven seconds left in this third quarter. Twenty-three to nothing, Miami. And they've had that lead on the board since uh, back early in the second quarter. Clinton Portis again, the tailback. Dorsey's pass gets it complete. This is Daryl Jones out to the 50-yard line and knocked out of bounds after picking up the first down in Syracuse territory. Willie Ford will make the stop after gaining 12. And again, depth at the wide receiver. Daryl Jones' uh, second catch tonight. Just a little flat route of the inside receiver. And that's what Ken Dorsey does best. Uh, he throws on time. Uh, it's hard to sack him because he gets rid of the ball so fast. 12 of 23, 209 yards and a touchdown for Dorsey tonight. Deep over the middle, and there's that tight end, Shockey again. Shockey still on his feet, fighting his way down the field, getting some help from Andre King, who was pushing. But that's going to be a first down just inside the 20. It's a gain of 29 yards. Ron, anytime you see too deep and anytime you see a tight end down the middle, that's the reason he's going to catch the ball down the middle against too deep coverage. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter as Miami is walking slowly back over to the far side of the field, and we will take a timeout. We head to the final 15 minutes from the Carrier Dome with our score, Miami 23, and the Orangemen of Syracuse, nothing. So we're back, and uh, a lot of folks have headed for the hot cocoa at home. 23 to nothing. It has been all hurricanes in this one, as their defense has held Syracuse to only 107 yards, 81 rushing, and 26 passing. Leading tackler for Syracuse is Clifton Smith. Ten tackles, seven of those solo. He's really had an outstanding game. Sixth time uh, this year that he's had 10 or better. Santana Moss breaks a tackle. Boy, will not break this one. He got slammed down hard in the secondary by number 25, Will Allen. That's the other thing they do to you, Ron, with their passing game and the pressure the entire ball game. Your defensive backs get tired. You better have uh, a couple sets of uh, corners to play against these guys. Moss now three receptions for 19 yards. That's Portis. Portis inside the 10. It's going to be first and goal Miami. Willie Ford saved a touchdown. Yeah, I, I talked about how tough it is to play against Miami. Will Allen has had a very difficult night. Here he gets chased down the field. Andre King, uh, he works against him. Then all of a sudden, Daryl Jones comes in the ballgame, hits him on zone coverage. He makes a good tackle. 
and then he gets blocked and misses a tackle on James Jackson. So you've got to be active against these guys if you're going to play corner. Will Allen, one of the best in the country. Portis, right side, gets by one tackler, tripped up as he goes inside the five to the four, and it's Keon Walker who uh, who tripped him up, and there is a flag down at the 10-yard line. Yeah, Martin Bible, number uh, 65 with a hold. Ron, this is homecoming, and uh, a tough homecoming. You get to all the, the bands were out early, and the uh, alumni band, and uh, the alumni cheerleaders are in the end zone and uh, pulling for their team for... Paul Pascaloni and his squad. There's the alumni cheerleaders. 49,327 in attendance tonight here at the Carrier Dome. They've seen cheers change, Joe. Haven't they? <laughs> I don't know if they've now, what heard. what are you alluding to? I don't know if they've heard uh, let the dogs out. <laughs> Portis, the lone setback, and Shockey, the tight end in motion. And they leave him in the block this time, and they throw back into the boundary to Portis. And he's going to take it inside the 15 down for around the 12 before Greenwood will make the tackle. Yeah, Marlon Greenwood stays active. He saw the screen, uh, reacted to it, made the tackle down the field. But uh, we talked about how tough it is against the secondary, but it's equally tough against the linebackers. Because they got so many people to cover and they miss number 54 tonight and you know it's got to be killing him yep. that he can't help his teammates Dorsey has hit his last six passes goes back to uh, Portis and wow he gets whacked and guess who Clifton Smith Clifton is six times this year he's had ten tackles or better and he just recorded another one. He is in double figures again this evening. Now it becomes uh, scoreboard watching time for the uh, Miami fans. They're up 23 to nothing. Florida State's playing Florida right now. Head 14 to 7. So uh, all plays a factor now for the Miami team. And a timeout is called by Syracuse. So we'll take it with them. 12 14 remaining. 23 to nothing, the Canes. Across the street, Sadler Hall watching the uh, ball game tonight. As you look out the window back across at the Carrier Dome, 12 14 left to play in this uh, ball game. That's Ed Placey in uh, Mike Tirico's old dorm. Is it really? Yep. Well, you did do your homework. You saw it last night. This game, this game's throwing an anchor down too. Uh, took a lot of discussion to show me for somebody moved. Tell the man, step it off. Let's keep on playing. All right, Ron, who are you going to here? Uh, I keep looking at number 88. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take right here, Reggie Wayne. Okay. I'm going to pick Reggie Wayne. You're, you're picking the tight end right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Syracuse showing an all-out blitz and they back off and they do stay at home and they're coming to your side and it is in out of hands of Reggie Wayne. Will Allen with the cover. Reggie Wayne's the fade guy and uh, Will Allen with good coverage. Reggie Wayne had a shot at it. Working against him. Ball's thrown up there. He gets a chance to go up and grab it. Ooh, Just went through his hands. Hit him right in the hands. So Todd Sievers will be trying a field goal of 33 yards. And he
he is four of four from this range. Good pass. He took this one right down the middle. So we're going to go away for 60. 26 to nothing. Miami on top. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Pacific Life. Annuities, insurance, investments. Use the power of Pacific Life. And by Sonic, America's drive-in. 26 to nothing. The number two team in the land leading Syracuse in just over 12 minutes left to play in this one. Jackson and Allen, the two deep men, as uh, Sievers prepares to kick it off for Miami. going to be stopped there and that's uh, Beard Kevin Beard after a 30 yard return well it's time for you the viewers to go online and help us select tonight's player of the game here's the list of nominees for Miami Ken Dorsey James Jackson Santana Moss also Jeremy Shockey Clifton Smith for Syracuse and Duke Pettijohn that's pretty good it's a pretty tough call tonight I'm going to leave it up to the viewers tonight. I'm not going to vote. <laughs> Thanks. <We're t> <laughs> I don't have. I can't. I couldn't pick anybody tonight. Been a lot of good performances. Right up the middle is Mungro, and he will go out over the 35 for around the 37. Dan Morgan on the tackle. I'm going to vote for the gutsiest guy, that man right there, who's still back in the ball game after. Injuring his uh, his big toe. Yeah, he really has played uh, well with an injury. Six tackle for Morgan tonight. Munro again, and he's going to take it across the 40-yard line for the first down. Matt Walters there defensively. They got one game remaining, uh, Ron, against Boston College. Dan Morgan looks like the, the first thought we had that he was injured and hurt a ligament in his big toe, but has come back and played very well. Monroe's got uh, 50 yards on seven carries tonight. Monroe again, and there's Dan Morgan. I was talking to uh, Brad Edwards the other day. Uh, he's the researcher at ESPN. He knows everything. Whatever you ask him, he knows. He, he has the answer before you ask the question. But he said, when you look at Syracuse, I think Syracuse was 55th and Boston College was 58th in schedule, uh, uh, schedule toughness and so forth. So we asked whether Florida State would hop Miami after the night if they beat Florida. Pressure on Anderson. He's going to be sacked. They got him way back at the 29-yard line the second time that they've got to him, and it's Walters who got the sack. Well, they get so much penetration out of those tackles. They just roar him up the field. William Joseph, Damian Lewis. Loss of 11 yards on that play. Watch these two tackles. They just roar up the field. For 91, 92, and uh, great effort by Walters. Get that left hand in there and hit the ankle of R.J. Anderson. Clock runs with nine minutes and 38 seconds left in our ball game. And he's going to go on top, way, way, way on top. And his receiver was about the, the what? 10 yards behind that, yeah. uh, that throw. Closest was uh, the defensive backs of Miami. Edward Reed back there trying to gather in his third interception of the night. R.J. Anderson is getting good time tonight. He's going to develop into a very good quarterback. It's Jim Hoffer, the quarterback coach, uh, discussing his play tonight. Very good teacher. Eight 
punt of the night by Syracuse. Santana Moss, you see the numbers on him. He's due to break one. Schaefer has denied that so far by getting the ball so high. See if he can do it again. Now this more of a line drive. But the gunner is right there. And Moss makes the reception, gets by the gunner, cuts it back upfield, and he'll take it to the 33-yard line. 48 yards in the kick and 10 on the return. 9-19 left in the ball game. All Miami. And back live at the stadium. Uh, I guess that has to be one of Mike Patrick's tickets. Uh, one of his friends. He's a basketball fan. Yeah. yeah. Dorsey, 16 of 28, 263 yards and a touchdown. Running play at Jackson tries to bounce it to the outside, and that's a nice tackle by 15 Willie Ford. Adrian Karsten, uh, what do you have for us? Ron, we got a call from Sports Center earlier today asking us to follow up on a broadcast report out of Alabama that Butch Davis had been called, contacted by Alabama concerning the head job there. I'm with Paul D., athletic director at Miami, an old friend. Paul, what can you tell us? Well, uh, there have been apparently informal contacts between uh, people at Alabama and Coach Davis. There have been no direct contacts between the university and the University of Miami, and to my knowledge, with Coach Davis. But I can just tell you that we're doing everything we can to keep, Dave, keep Coach Davis at the University of Miami, and that's what my job is, and that's what we're going to do. Because of your relationship with uh, everyone back there, Mal Moore, of course, uh, the Chancellor, Mr. Sorensen, you would expect them to contact you first, yes? Well, I would expect that along the way, before anything uh, went too far, that that would be the case. But, you know, that that is just one of those courtesies, and I'm sure they will, and they're great people and I'm sure that'll happen at the appropriate time. Hopefully I'll cut them off at the pass. Ryan Paul did tell me you know it's unique when people say why do all the uh, other people want our coaches that's better than people not wanting our coaches. <laughs> <laughs> okay Adrian 805 left in the ball game. Butch is good really, interview. Yeah. yeah. Butch has done a really nice job down at uh, Miami. Got to be a five yard step off here instead of a third down and about 12. It's going to be third down and 17. And because of the score, uh, Butch Davis has continued to keep his first team in offense and defense. Miami penalties, that's 10 tonight for 74. Majority of those have come in the second half. But again, it goes back to what you were talking about, lack of focus yeah. because they, they manhandled Syracuse they, in the first half. They have complete control of this football game, and they have. And they give it to Jackson. Takes it off the left side, out over the 30 to the 31. Charles Burton, defensively, junior out of Sugarland, Texas, is there to make the tackle. To Matt Walters, who's being attended to over on the sideline, sophomore out of Melbourne, Florida. Just think the difference, though, if they had to, if Miami had to come up here tonight, play this game outdoors Ooh. in the old stadium. Well, would it, I don't know that you could have got him out of the locker. <laughs> it's cold outside. Yeah, two Celsius. Malik Campbell being caught by the jersey and tackled as he crosses the 40 by Andre Johnson. 41 on the kick, 14 on the return. Well, tomorrow at ESPN, it's Sunday night NFL football at 8.30 Eastern. The uh, Jaguars of Jacksonville, led by receiver Jimmy Smith, take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And ESPN's farewell to Three Rivers Stadium. Then on ABC's Monday Night Football, the Redskins and the Rams, Washington 0-2 on Monday Night Football this season. I don't know if I would, darling. <laughs> they may find some more in there. Gets it off to D. Brown. And the screen is going to pick up uh, a gain of about seven yards. Morgan and uh, Green combining on the tackle. 6.30 left in the ball game. Syracuse still has a chance to go to the bowl game. Huh? They can win next week. Zinged it to the near side and has it complete to Jackson. Maurice Jackson 
Jr. Good, out of Rochester. Good arm right there by R.J. Anderson on the out. Sideline warning against Miami. That's their first. Unless they're going to take points away. I think they're okay on that sideline. Going to back them up. Not much room in the sidelines here, so it'd be very easy to get a sideline warning. Yeah, you're, you're, the fans are right on you. Yeah. On the sideline. Then Steve Ritchie has got that uh, truck going by behind him. Brown and Mungro in the backfield right now. You see the blitz coming from Miami. Quickly gets it away. The hot route, and that's Malik Campbell. And let's see, pushed out of bounds at around the 42. Ron, all, all our guys travel here. We, you talked about the camera people here. We have the best people. Steve Ritchie's one of our guys, and he had a tough loss last night. His high school team, and they don't get to see the games of sometimes of their sons playing. And they uh, lost. Lexington Catholic lost a tough game last night. Boyle County. Boyle County got him again. Here comes that blitz up the middle. Malik Campbell breaks off the tackle. And catching him from behind is Dan Morgan. And boy, it looks as though that, uh, yeah, he got driven down on his shoulder and Malik Campbell is injured. And is rolling back and forth in pain at the 18. Could be his knee. 20 yards, that's the longest play of the night. And you know Miami wants a shutout, Ron. The, the defensive uh, staff and the defensive players do not want to allow Syracuse in this end zone. Great effort by Dan Morgan. While we have a second, let's check in with Adrian. Ron, checking back in with something you said earlier in the game, that Syracuse class that still maintains the perfect graduation rate. Well, if you remember, that was Donovan McNabb's senior class. His parents, Sam and Wilma, were here earlier tonight to hand off for Donovan a check for $100,000 that the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles has earmarked for a brand new locker room. Wilma's, uh, rather, his mother, Wilma, said, you know, if it weren't for the scholarship that Donovan got here, he wouldn't be where he is today. His father said that Coach Pascaloni, Coach Rogers, who was his coach at the time, really treated him like a son. Ron, I think this is great. With Donovan's foundation giving back $100,000, it's a great way to give back, and it tells me that Donovan really Really appreciated the time you had here and just a way of saying thank you. Now that's great. That's great. A lot of players do that, Ron, and you don't hear about it. Uh, Donovan McNabb, congratulations. Your time here, you were thought highly of when you played here, and you thought highly of with the Eagles. Anderson, shovel pass, Mungro. Not very far on this one. He will take it inside the 20 to around the 17. Jonathan Vilma, number 51, making the tackles. We're about to go under five minutes left in our ball game. Hurry up by Syracuse and from the shotgun. Anderson. Get away from Walters, gets the pass for the end zone, and he missed him a long way. Adrian, uh, let's check back with you. Conversation with Butch Davis at the hotel out in East Syracuse last night. He told me, all right, so 20 points is at 1,000 points. Well, he talked to Grant Taft. He says, as far as he knows, the computer models really don't follow one guideline or another. So if it's 21 or 1,000, no big deal. It's the people who score 66 to 13 and note that score, because that was the score in this game two years ago. Those are the people who really think it might make a difference and skew it, but obviously he claims it does not. So there's really no point in scoring any more than 26 at this point. Okay. <laughs> Almost intercepted by Miami, and that one, Philip Buchanan. 
almost picked it up. No, I beg your pardon. It was Reed. Reed. Edward yeah, Reed. He almost yeah. got his third. <laughs> what Adrian's talking about, though, that there is concern if they get under 20 points with a victory margin that it could hurt them tonight. the pocket got a man not any longer here comes the pressure and he is going to be tackled at the 15 yard line five yards shy of the first down and that'll just about do it right there green is the man who got him So 429 left in the ball game. Let's take a timeout. Miami 26, Syracuse nothing. <laughs> 26 to nothing, Miami on top. And if you're wondering, the last time at Syracuse was shut out at home, October the 30th, 1993. 43 to nothing loss to Virginia Tech. And prior to that, it was 1984 to Rutgers. Clinton Portis comes back in at uh, tailback. He gets the handoff, bounces it to the outside. And it's going to be tripped up. Did not get out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. Willie Ford on the tackle. Portis really stepped up big time for Miami last year and came in and really helped him. He still does not look to me like he is 100% as far as having the burst that he had last year. I told you he injured a foot, yeah. came back against Louisiana Tech. They got depth, though, too. The other thing about this ball club is they got a lot of receivers, a lot of running backs. I'll tell you something. Najee Davenport was a tailback. They moved him to fullback. I thought he's really been a difference maker for them as well this year. Unable to play because of an injury tonight. Portis again takes it right up the middle. Clifton Smith on the tackle. Syracuse would like to get one more shot, Ron, but they got to get the, they got to stop him here on third down. Third down and four. Portis again fighting his way and by golly on that second effort I think he might have gotten the first down he's very close to it first down. First down, Jack. First down. Walker made the tackle they're gonna go across and get the chains and bring them in as you can see from where the sash is it is very very close I think he's short run by just half an inch As I said, first down. He had it. <laughs> well, certainly a disappointing night for the Syracuse faithful. Homecoming, and uh, this one has just not worked out at all. And uh, that speaks volumes. Picture session. Uh, Adrian Carson's down there getting his picture with the cheerleaders. <laughs> Clock runs with two minutes and 45 seconds left in this one. Portis again. Gonzalez out front blocking uh, for him. Adrian, uh, let's check with you. All right, Ron, tell me who doesn't stand out here. And no, it's not me. It's Warren Kimball, class of 57. Warren, you're in some pretty fine shape here, aren't you? Oh, we're still going at 65. <laughs> Happy homecoming. Give me your Thank best you. sis boom ba. What was your favorite cheer with your megaphone and your white box, please? To who let the dogs out? I have the slightest idea what you're talking about. I didn't think so, Ron. 
<laughs> okay, Adrian. <laughs> you know, I saw Warren. They had him up on top of a pyramid a while ago, and I thought, you know, Warren probably is real anxious to get down quickly. Portis that time, uh, they're trying to string it out. That's great. Good, uh, good time I uh, had by that gentleman. Great sense of humor. Good school spirit coming yeah. back. Yeah. Snell and uh, and Smith combining on the tackle on that one. It's going to be third down and nine. And a good vertical jump. And I have a feeling that you know he's going to he's down there smiling right now, but probably he's going to go back and lie in a very hot tub of water <laughs> so that he can move tomorrow. Wouldn't you imagine? I, just looking at Warren, he's probably got a lot of bucks too. <laughs> he's done all right for himself. About to go under one minute left in this ball game. Portis again. Takes it straight up the middle and he'll go to the 31. That's not enough for the first down as Walker will make the tackle. Not many people left in here. Right? Miami faithful estate. Well, coming up next, it's the college football tonight scoreboard. Brian Kenny with all the scores and highlights from around college football. And Chris Lee and Kirk join us from Tallahassee with an update on Florida, Florida State. Then stay tuned in Sports Center coming your way at 11 Eastern. And tough for Paul Pascaloni and his staff. They've got to come back and uh, win next week to be al alive for the bowl game. Capshaw almost kicked this thing out of the carrier dome. All the way back, Riddle to the 16 yard line. And he's going to take it back out over the 40. Williams on the tackle. Well, the voting is complete. Tonight's Visa Player of the Game is selected by the fans at home on ESPN.com is Ken Dorsey, 16 of 28, 263 yards and a touchdown. And by the way, a total offense tonight, Miami 419, Syracuse 147. So we've talked a lot about the Miami offense this evening, but uh, also have tried to let you know that this defense for the Hurricanes is really a formidable group. A complete team, and uh, R.J. Anderson has learned on the job tonight at the quarterback position against a very good defense. Anderson steps up, gets this pass away, and has it complete. That's uh, Tyree. McCannon made the tackle. And with the first down, it'll stop the clock momentarily as we have eight ticks on the board. They'll probably kill it clock right here Ron as soon as they get lined up eight seconds to go he's going to kill the clock you know Ron we've seen Florida State and Miami both and uh, I believe Florida State's a little bit better do you yep I really do now two good football teams right? I, I really I wish we had seen Oklahoma yeah. I hope uh, you know that's just a to get to see them again. They are awfully, awfully good themselves, both sides of the football. This would be a good championship game. Uh, if Miami plays Florida State, I'm sure Oklahoma not taking anything away from them. It'll be a good game. Either team they play, Miami or Florida State. Should be the last play of the game unless we have a penalty. Anderson throws back to the corner of the end zone and it is knocked away. Broken up by Fitzgerald. And with that, double zeros up on the clock, and Butch Davis can breathe a little easier. Another notch in the belt. For the final score, Miami 26 and Syracuse nothing. Coming up next, College Football Tonight's scoreboard is in stay tuned at 11 Eastern for Sports Center. Next Saturday, join us as Virginia takes on Virginia Tech. For Mike Godfrey, to Adrian Carson, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. So we say so long for the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Once again, here is Brian Kenny. Brian? Ron, Mike, thank you very much. Rodney Gilmore, John Makovic joining with me. Oh, we've got a lot of time to talk college football, football. here tonight. Let's, let's, let's start with this. Now, Butch Davis said he wouldn't be running it up, and I guess he didn't, but that's a convincing win. Oh, uh, no, but as Darth Vader would say, 
impressive, most <laughs> impressive. They had to go into a hostile environment, put up some points. They did it. Ken Dorsey looked like a very confident, mature quarterback there. The defense shut out a team that we expected them to shut out because we didn't think Syracuse would put up many points. It was an impressive victory, I think, for Miami. And Butch didn't have to worry about pulling his starters, which yeah. made it all the better for him. This is the kind of game that Miami needs down the stretch, and they still have another game to go. They have to continue to play impressively. Washington's going to be breathing down their neck after a big victory this afternoon over Washington State as well. The whole BCS picture might appear to be clear, but it's just going to get cloudy here for another week or so. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that, and Washington has a gripe. You know, Miami looking up, Washington looking up from there. By the way, I wear the, the Cal Golden Bear colors here just for a sense of balance as we talk big game with the Stanford I'm neutral. Men. Quite all right. They coach so many teams, so you go that way. <laughs> we'll free. take a break right now. When we come back, we'll go through all the big games of the day. Of course, we'll have the latest on Florida and Florida State, the Civil War, and implications and ramifications of both.